Welcome everyone to episode six of the MGTOWN podcast. I am producer Tim and with me as always is Drexel. Say hi. Hey, what's up everybody? Uh, thanks for coming in and we got uh, yet another show. This is almost like the makeup for my esteemed guest uh, today in the uh, first week of 2021, which is Dollhouse Phil. Hello, I'm Dollhouse Phil, because my name's Phil and I look like a dollhouse. No, 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 I actually run the dollhouse. Sex doll extraordinaire, based out of the UK, but have franchises around the world. Hello. Uh, it's so short and sweet and great. Hey, they have that charm, you know? Yeah, you know, so Phil, do you ever, uh, while traveling, do you get a kick out of just using your uh, your Britishness to just score chicks, man? Back before, you know, you had to go your own way because these broads got too fucking crazy. Um, I, w the, the, I remember one. God, where was I? Um, I think it might have been Kuala Lumpur. Um, I was out there and there's this Vietnamese uh, cute, cute girl. Been about 20, 21, something like that. She looked kind of upset. And I could overhear her talking to a friend. I was just talking to an American and like he obviously knew about Vietnam, so he gave me a hard time. So I thought, time for a little bit of lime flavored charm. Just walked over. Yep. I'm sorry, I couldn't help but over here, but perhaps you might want to talk to somebody British. Just like really <laughs> just lay on the accent. Oh, <laughs> yep. thank you. And of course it went from there. And it's, was it time to pass? No, it was time to smash. That's right. You know, that's why I love this guy. Phil, okay, the, so the British accent is the cheat code. It really is. Like, it, it's a cheat code. And so, so, but now to be fair, when, okay, if you come over to America, it's going to be your cheat code. We go over there as Americans, it's our cheat code. And, you know, we can go through Europe, especially as black dudes. Black American men can be anywhere and just be us. And it's cool. Same with British men, British white men, especially. And, it's kind of funny to see that, like, you know, what is considered exotic is all a point of reference, right? Like if someone says, hey, Phil, what is exotic to you? All the exotic means is something that's different from your norm, right? So, so to you, the, yeah. your, your accent sound, you have no accent at all in your mind. That's just the way you speak. But now when you speak to me, I'm like, holy shit, look at that accent. And so it, it happens that way. Like I said, I know women from all over. Um, a few guys, because I, I try not to be around too many dudes, because... I don't know if you've noticed this, Phil, but in these times, it's been the dudes who are quicker to backstab you and do some duplicitous uh, BS to you, right? Have you have you kind of gotten that feeling? Oh, yeah. I mean, um, especially if you're the guy from out of town, mm -hmm. they'll close ranks on you straight away. Mm -hmm. If they see you, uh, well, maybe not even you making moves on their women folk, maybe their folk making moves on you. And don't be like, no, 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 we can't have that shit. No, no. Yep. They're haters. Well, here's the thing, though. They'll they'll hate on you. But yet, if they came to wherever you're at, they would want to be able to just dip their their dick in anything, right? And I've always had an issue with that. I said, look, man, I take exception to anybody who's going to uh, uh, deal in that level of hypocrisy. And but it is what it is. And you know, at the end of the day, uh, it's one of the reasons why, like, Nick is one of the few guys I'll ever hang around because. Most dudes like that, that uh, the, the Q show, uh, Mr. Out of the Darkness himself, who tried to do some bullshit to me, simping for females, right? For female twat validation, right? And people do these things. And you've seen this, Phil. Like, guys will, will say stuff behind your back to women to try to boost themselves up. And it never works out well for them, ever. Oh, yeah. I mean, I've, Christ, I think I was in um, Ghana. At the time, so a lot of um, American military around actually in the hotel that I was at, and um, it was a Saturday or Sunday afternoon. We we're all around the pool, we all had like a few beers and we're kind of mingling. And there was one girl, she was kind of getting a bit warm on the alcohol, uh, military type. She mm -hmm. said, Oh, you're British, I love that accent. Everything you say sounds suave and sophisticated. Yep. And I think I could see two of her, maybe her colleagues or whatever, just kind of like kind of shoulder her out of the way and say, no, stay away from him. You know, those British guys are gay. But yep. same principle of exactly what you just said. It, it, I'm, I'm telling you, Phil, if, if you were to like look through, like, you know, if you were to look through my phone, look at like who I in, interact with on a day-to-day -day basis, like you will almost never see me around dudes. And that's why, because they are so quick to turn on you. Like they act like females now. So I'm like, yeah, I'm good. 
I, I, I get more, I get more of a, uh, let's just say a, uh, how about consistency out of female? Some, obviously, you know, there, there's lots of crazy ones, but I get more consistency out of some females than I would have most dudes now because I don't know. They're just so, they're so effeminate and, and, and emotional now that I'm just kind of like, damn, well, I guess it's, if I have to hang around somebody, I'm like, don't get me wrong. If I'm playing video games or, you know, being on a, on a panel or something, that's different. But like, and just like, Hey, you want to go hang out? You want to go watch a movie back when theaters were open? I would rather do it with females because these dudes always have an issue with every little thing. Uh, why is she talking to you and not me? Uh, who's that girl? And, and Phil, have you ever had guys that, they, that if you if you I go just, up to a girl and hug her, they always got to ask, who is she? Hey, hey, hey Phil, did, did you fuck her? Did you yeah. smash yet? You ever notice that? Yeah. Like high school. I've noticed it's a, more of an American colloquialism, but it really applies here where like you'll call guys bitches because yep. that's exactly what they are. They are, they're bitch point. made. And it's like a female level of lack of self-confidence, which is driving that. Because, I mean, like, yep. you know, I, I know we're kind of friendly with one another, but, like, even if we didn't know another, it's like, oh, there's a guy called Drex coming over to the UK. I'd be more likely to say, like, look, there's plenty of women to go around, but they've got enormous levels of crazy going on, so you have been warned. But yep. maybe that's the red pill in me, just, like, being, like, a normal guy, whereas most guys now, it's built... They got one eyes. Big, tall, ripped, black guy coming and say, oh, shit, I feel inadequate, so I'm just going to be a bitch about it. Yep. Well, and, and Phil, here's here's something that uh, I told someone on Nick's channel, right? I uh, This is some, something that I don't know a lot of people know about me. So when I started my, uh, my, my swingers group years ago, that was 2005, right? Here goes a great irony. It has been me who has been pushing for white women to get with white men. Because, you know, you, have, you understand how the swinger lifestyle works. In general, here's what swinger swinging chicks want, or, or you know, these women, these college girls want to experiment. They want women, they want you know, orgy slash gangbang or black men. They they want the British Broadcasting Corporation. Yeah, <laughs> they, 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 they want they want the BBC. So my thing was this though, Phil, especially with the so-called, I'm sure you've heard the term hot wife, right? You've heard that term. The hot wives are always looking for black dudes, the black alpha. So so I, I was it was ironic that here is me going like this. Look, you can help me out by I, I can widen the pool if you accept more than just black dudes, because I'll be the first to tell you, Phil, the problem with black dudes as, as uh, overall is that some of the biggest bitch ass uh, uh, simping that you'll see come out of black American men. A lot of them were raised by single moms. So they're going to start competing over a chick who's already married. Right. They compete over a woman who's coming to get gangbanged. It's like, that doesn't even make sense. And, and so I was like, look, the issue is, and the other thing is, black guys are, have this, this propensity to be on bullshit. Whether it's being late, whether it's forgetting, they're always forgetful. So they're, they're not reliable in general. So it was me saying, like, it, it, you helped me by broadening. Whereas, as you know, Phil, men don't have that same standard. Like, a guy goes like this. Hey, Phil, is she hot? Yeah. Is she cool? Yeah. Is she clean? Yeah. Game on. We don't care what the ethnicity is, if she's Vietnamese, if she's Italian. Men don't have that. Women do. Women have an absolute, men have a preference. That's all. Yeah, women are the most racist people. Very, very racist. A lot of people don't understand. Like, and, 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 no, no, here's the thing. Actually, let me take that back. I wouldn't call them racist. I would call them either highly preferential or discriminatory. Because racist implies something much more sinister. Whereas, and, and let's face it. Different women have different experiences with different men. So, you know, I've come across the uh, I've come across the white chicks who have daddy issues, right? And their dad, and this this is a, a, a keynote to all white men out there who are fathers: do not, do not, do not bash black men and tell your daughter to never bring home a black guy. Whatever you do, don't do that because what she's going to do is what Phil. If, if I tell you not to do something. <laughs> And, and, and from a young age, right? Phil, whatever you do, don't ever be around Asian women. Don't bring an Asian woman home. Don't talk to Asian women. What's going to happen when you get to school, Phil? It's just a matter of time. It's only a matter of time, right? Before a, a cute Asian girl starts interacting with you and you, you have a preconceived notion. She's going to be this evil person. And she's like, hi, what's your name? You know, I'm Maylene. And you're like, well, I'm Phil. F Phil's going to get passed around the engineering department, much like the uh, cheat the cheat paper for the exam. <laughs> right? <laughs> that, that sentiment carried on to me later in life, actually. Maybe it's, you know, I can be somewhat contrary as a, as a guy. 
But mm -hmm. um, when I first thought, there's a business opportunity here to be selling sex dolls. Now, do I want to be known as a sex doll vendor? I thought, well, you know, I'm supposed to be red pilled. I'm not really supposed to give a shit what people think. But the one which just pushed me right over the, the precipice. Uh -oh. When I tell my mother she's going to be dreadfully embarrassed. Yeah, yep. let's do this shit. Yeah. Drex, that doesn't just work on women, though. It works on all human beings. The easiest way to get someone to do something is to tell them not to do it. Right? If you hate a certain, if, if your parents hate a certain music band, you love it. Yep. Yeah, and that, that's what I said. Like, like, don't make it an issue. Like, here's the thing. If you just, if you're very nonchalant with it, like, hey, yeah, not really my thing, you, you didn't highlight it. it the problem, and, and to be honest, Phil, the, the same is also true on the, on the flip side of the coin, which is a lot of black boys are told by their black moms to stay, stay away from the white girl. She's evil. She's this, that, and the other. So wh why do you think you see black men gravitate toward Becky? That's why. Because you cannot put that shit in kids' heads. And, and, and that's why you see it. And it, it, it's kind of uh, sad. But at the end of the day, you know, like, it is what it is. But when it comes to, like, a lot of these relationships, Phil, they're failing regardless of ethnicity and regardless of age, regardless of demographic. Have you been reading about all these quarantine couples uh, uh, calling it quits? Have you been keeping an eye on that shit? I, I see it as I breeze through the news, but uh, I, I really delve deeply into it because it's just the same coronavirus bullshit I tend to see in the UK. Didn't Boris extend the lockdown again? Or uh, Oh, yeah, we're it? in now tier five. We didn't even have five tiers. And, like, nothing's changed. It's Well, I mean, the thing is... Uh, Tier four, right, you, you know, if you can work from home, work from home. You can only go to essential stores like, like food and pharmacy, stuff like that. We're now in tier five because it's such a danger, clear and present danger to the health of the populace. Work from home if you, if you, can, if you can. If you can't, go to work. Only go to essential shops like, you know, food stores and pharmacy. So I'm like, well, what's changed? It's just <laughs> Boris going in front of the nation saying it's gotten worse but you're going to stay in exactly the same, but we're going to put you in a higher tier. You say, well, what fucking difference does it make? If it's dangerous, you're not allowed to leave the building, are you? So that's why I know it's all bullshit. Have you noticed, uh, Phil, the suicide rate uh, skyrocketing among like small business owners, young men? That wouldn't surprise me in the slightest because they've just been kicked to the wayside. They really have. Not yeah. one thought for these small businesses. And one of the historic things about the UK, more so England, was that we were called a nation of shopkeepers. So every, almost everyone was a small business owner at one point. And this is what brought about things like, you know, the British Empire. So it's to just disregard that and then have us like living underneath the umbrella of Amazon and a few other companies just seems like madness. Unless you want to crash the economy. The New World Order. We saw it, right? Yeah, it was, it was the plan all along. Um, some people are starting to kind of figure it out, but... Well, you know, the uh, the divorce rate is uh, skyrocketed 38 um, percent during the quarantine. You know, one of the things I've noticed, Phil, is when it comes to coupling, right? People are out, out here, they're in their couples or whatever. You know, they're they're you know, they're booed up. You know, it's cuffing season now as the cold weather draws in. A lot of these things didn't really work. Right. Once once it came time for to, to really sit down with whoever this other person is. Do you know what you realize, Phil? I don't really like them. You notice that shit? Like, like, you, like, like be, okay, beyond smashing, there's only so much of that you can do. There's only so much Netflix and chill you can do. You have to actually, like, you know, be around this person, right? And, and Phil, what, what have you kind of seen, like, with, with the lockdown in the UK, how, uh, how couples have been faring over there? It kind of seems the, much the same to me because I'll, I'll tend to see amongst most married couples, like, say, over the age of, like, to 28 or something like that. Um, so they've got a few years longevity behind them. It's almost as though they're enduring married life through gritted teeth and they're just persevering alongside this person. So they don't enjoy each other's company because you can always spot when the pubs were open, the married couples, because they're sitting there on the table not talking to one another. And looking Thank at you. <laughs> Phil, do you know, I've been saying that for years. Um, I'll be out and about, right? And I'll be out with a lady friend. And you can tell that that we're cool because do you notice, Phil, we're, we're leaning in, right? We're always leaning in to the conversation. We're not going like this on our phone. 
like, and you've seen that, right? Like you'll, you'll be, you'll see married couples where they don't even speak. Phil, I kid you not. I was at a Cracker Barrel once and I remember I'm sitting there talking, chatting. Uh, I can't remember who I was with. Maybe I've been with Nick, maybe. And we're just kind of chatting, shooting the shit. And I kind of, you know, you know, you kind of keep looking over at a, you know, out of the corner of your eye. And I'm kind of looking over like, are, are those people like, you know, are they, are they mute? Are you know, What's their problem, right? They were a married couple who literally, and you've seen this, Bill. And this is like, I think this is like around like before smart, like smartphones are really a thing, right? And what you just said, I saw in real time. Like, and, and it wasn't the first, it was the first time I've truly noticed it where the man is sitting there just kind of, <laughs> woman. <laughs> and I'm like, so, so you guys are like, but Phil, I couldn't imagine there's any day you could ever bump into me where you would say, hey, Drex, what's up? And I'd be like this, oh, nothing. Phil, there's always something. There's always something to talk about. I always put this down to this is what happens when you spend too much time together. Now, if you let the woman control the relationship, you know, whether you're married or just, you know, boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever. I've had times where she said to me, oh, Phil, will you just sit down and watch the soap opera with me on TV? And it's like, dear God, I'd rather pull my eyeballs out with spoons rather than do that. Oh, yep. but it would be nice if you just sit here with me because it would make her happy. And I think there's a lot of guys that would just sit there and do that. And it creates like resentment and stuff like that. But And again, if you're in each other's space all the time, you've got nothing to talk about. Now, my grandfather's uh, era, uh, Lord rest his soul, um, he used to go out to the club and there was no arguments. It's like, no, I'm just going to the club. And the, the wife would just, yeah, okay, fine. She would go to Women's Guild or whatever it was. And they had yep. a separate life for all that they were married. And I think this whole coronavirus thing, which is make, making it worse because you can't go out and do anything separate, is making people live in each other's space. And they are bored shitless of one another. Yeah. It, well, Phil, I, so here's the thing. I'm going, uh, I'm going to Columbia in, what are we at? Six days. So I'll be I'll be in Columbia in six days, right? And uh, my friend is there. And a typical phone conversation with us, I don't know if you've ever had, the, well, you have had it because every time that I talk to you, we end up in this same scenario where we have to like force a shutdown or some outside force has to force it because certain people can just keep talking because there's so many interesting topics to talk about and just shoot the shit where I've noticed, Phil, if I am with uh, whoever, it doesn't matter if I'm around a male or a female, if, we're, if it's not someone I can just keep having the conversation kind of roll. And the other thing, Phil, even when we are talking, that's okay too, right? Like, you know, when sometimes like, you're, you're like, let's say I, I'm in England or you're in America and we're just shooting the shit. And at some point it's like, all right, man. And then, you know, you're, you're just over there on your phone looking up something. You're kind of doing your own thing. I'm doing my own thing. Like, and then we kind of come back together and start talking again. You see what I'm saying? Like, like you can have that gap of of you're doing your own thing, and then you kind of like resume. It's like, okay, it's it's almost like when you watch a movie and then you open up the app again and it says, you know, resume from the same spot or start over. Okay, let's just resume. Click and you just keep going. But it's wild, man. I don't know. It's ugh. But but Phil, the the uh, one of the things I wanted to ask you about uh, last time, uh, one of your uh, your nation's uh, national treasures. Is uh, is Belle Delphine? I want your take on on Belle Delphine from from, from the British perspective. And this may um, spit in the face of the whole red pill community, kind of idealistically. I look at Belle Delphine and I just see enterprise. Yep. I mean, if there's a war, an army of Sims out there who are willing to give her money, and she's technically not breaking the law or anything like that, then just do it, make all the money, but don't be a typical thought and spend it into like three to five years, like invest it or put like a lot yep. of it away. Oh, you know, so Phil, the only, the only real issue I have with, with Belle Delphine, and it's not right now, it's the women like her. And I'm not saying she'll do this, but I'm saying she could. And you've seen this with porn stars. As long as they're getting the dick, the money, the attention, everything is okay, right? But then when they get older, and that stuff doesn't come anymore. Then they go like this: the porn industry is horrible. It takes advantage. It's like, wait a minute, it didn't. You weren't saying that when you were twenty. You're saying that now when you're thirty-six and out of the industry. And and no one wants to marry you. And no one wants to marry you. Yeah, and, and that's my thing, Phil. Belle Delphine better hope she keeps her simp in line because no dude, no sane dude is going to marry Belle Delphine. Nobody. Well, there is the beta that's smashing her on uh, OnlyFans right that now. That doesn't say a, a beta cup. Yeah, exactly. Perhaps if there was like an industry manager when people came in, or maybe just like a, a quick 
uh, five minute talk with someone as they open an only fans so look you might be successful with this you might make yep. a lot of money but if you do you can throw the idea of like happy marriage out the window because that's going the Go best on. you can for is a marriage with a simp you're not going to enjoy it you're probably going to end up trying to divorce them everyone's going to hate you yeah because once you lose your bucks no one cares anymore and as long yep. as you manage their expectations like that, and then if she's cool with that, then I'm like, go for it. It's yep. like, as you say, the expect is I'm, I'm going to be doing this until I'm like 65, and then, then it's time <laughs> yeah. to retire. It's like new. Well, you know how uh, YouTube has like a community manager, or sorry, a partner manager? You know, like Nick's got a guy with YouTube, right? Because mm -hmm. uh, Nick is a famous 100K subscriber channel now. We'll get there someday. But he's got actually a, a guy who works with him to promote his YouTube channel and make it grow. Hmm. Uh, they should have that for OnlyFans. A OnlyFans uh, channel producer or uh, channel, I don't know. What I would, give him whatever title you want. And all the money goes into a trust, right? And you just, she just sends you, the, the thought sends you a credit card statement every month because you know they love their credit cards, right? So just give her a visa. Right, give her a visa and send her off for a Mastercard and send her off into the world. And then she just mails you the statement. You pay it from the funds from the OnlyFans. And then when she retires, uh, she just lives off the whatever was in the trust. When that yep. runs out, I don't know. Work, work, work the four corners at night. Start, start hooking. All of that makes sense, but it does sound awfully like taking women's uh, authority and rights away, doesn't it? <laughs> Almost like there's a big father figure there saying, "No, you can't." Right. Stay. You can't spend all your money. Well, well, Phil, here's the thing, though. Um, I actually believe that men are doing a great disservice um, to each other, to women, and to the world at large. I strongly believe that men need to help promote thought culture. And here's my reason why. Here's my logic. When we talked to the last time, Phil, about women invading male spaces, right? These chameleons, right? So, Phil, wouldn't it make sense that the promotion of thought culture and feminism from the male perspective is actually a preemptive strike? So, so I want you to imagine this, Phil. What if we started going like this? Yeah, WAP is my favorite song. And we started promoting it, right? We started fisting the air promoting it. Here's what's going to happen, <laughs> Phil. Every time a girl questions about getting, uh, you know, uh, uh, tattoos on her boobs, you know what we should say? Yep, do it. Do you know why, Phil? So when she gets older, we know she's what kind of girl? A thought, right? So Unmarriageable. So, 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 so think about it. Now, now, Phil, these women are starting to take femininity classes now. They're starting to chameleon their way back to the, 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 the trad con housewife, right? Men need to not allow that to happen. We need to have all these hoes on OnlyFans. We need to have all of them getting ran through on film, record it. We need to make sure that thought is the new normal. So that way, when women try to walk around saying like, oh, Phil, I'm not like the rest of them. Why are you 26 and unmarried? Why did you go to college? Why do you have two degrees? Why are you in the workforce? The only reason that could be true is that you must be a feminist, right? See, Phil, like, like, encourage them. So, so encourage them basically for their own downfall, right? Because that's what the deep state does to women now, right? You got this, girl. You're strong and independent. Is that not what the deep state does? Destroying their lives later on in life, of course, when they're you know, reduced to buying cat food and, and, and popping Xanax at night, right? To just to keep themselves from slitting their fucking wrists. I, I think it's a brilliant plan. I mean, to be honest, I mean, it, it, it sounds like uh, an authoritarian population control method, although it's a very insidious one. I'd rather they just put contraception in the water. Well, Phil, Phil, Phil do, do you know what my issue has always been? My issue, and I've talked to women about this, men should have been given birth control, not women. That would have solved 5,000 problems in one. So, so, so Phil, imagine this. A, a guy, whatever age, is about to smash, but he's not. he doesn't have a vasectomy, right? Could you imagine a dude ever getting off the pill? Could you ever imagine that? No. No, it only happens when you actually want to reproduce. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A, a guy would go like this. I'm with this girl who's now my wife. I want to have kids now. So, so now there's no more sperm jackets. A guy's like this. Yeah, man, I'm on the pill. So, I mean, I'm, I'm fucking sterile. I'm shooting blanks. If you gave the, if you gave the the power of contraception to uh, in terms of birth control to men, 
men aren't going to try to stealth, right? Like, like you're, you're not going to see a bunch of dudes going like this. Yeah, yeah, I can't have babies. Busting a chick. Oh, damn, you're pregnant. Because that doesn't benefit him, right? He's like, well, shit, that, I lost my freedom. I'm losing money. I'm losing time. So, so that wouldn't benefit him. And, and, and you know, women, uh, there are women out there who, who have actually said the same thing. Like, yeah, I agree. Because they know women, women are going to go like this. Women are going to use birth control to go get ran through. But when it comes time to get pregnant, who are they going to choose every time, Phil? Well, what type of guy? So, so they're going to choose one of two. The one who can, uh, the one who can provide. They're going to choose the provider, beta, or they're going to choose the ge genetic alpha, right? Oh, I suppose. But they're so few and far between. That's the thing. So few and so far between. Far, like, betas, uh, over them. far more. Well, well, Phil, think about it. You've never heard of any pro athlete of a woman uh, uh, aborting a pro athlete's kid, right? You've never heard that story, have you? No. I, I think it might have no. been in the National Enquirer, perhaps. But yeah, because it. it doesn't happen. Because in their mind, shit, I got the alpha. Well, why would I abort? <laughs> I hit the jackpot, right? Especially because, you know, the, in this case, the alpha is going to have the, the money too, the resources. So it is what it is. But it, it's like we, we get to this point and uh, Phil, I'm actually going to do a, a show. I'm going to do I might do a whole live stream on it. And I want your take on this. It's, it's an epiphany I had. Um, you've heard the term hoe phase, right? Women going through their hoe phase. Yeah. Phil, I want, I want to get your take on this because I'm going to do an entire fucking video on this very topic. What if I told you that the epiphany I had was that it's quite revelatory. Everything is in reverse. Women do not go through a whole phase. They really don't. There is no whole phase. What it is, Phil, they're already hoes. They go through relationship phases. What do you that think about that? That would make sense. Yeah. You, you see my dating apps, right? Like, so, so Phil, they, they go get ran through, right? They're, they're out here having promiscuous sex, right? And then what happens, Phil? After they get ran through too long and too hard, what happens? I want something serious. I don't want NS, NSA, which is no strings attached. I don't want random hookups, right? And then they get in a relationship, Phil. They want that when they can't get it any further. When they can't get any further. But, but, but when they break up, then they're ready to settle down. But, but, but Phil, let's just say the woman is 27. She gets in a relationship with a guy. It lasts, let's say it lasts a year. She breaks up. She doesn't go look for another relationship. What does she go do, Phil? Just carry on. She has back on the carousel. Yeah, she gets back on the carousel. Like, like she, so when a woman breaks up, she doesn't go. I want to look for another relationship. No, no, no. She goes. She her default setting is to ride the carousel, right? Well, either that or just grab one of her orbiters because there's always plenty of those. correct, correct. So, so Phil, if you like, think about it. If you start to really look at, at women's body counts, I think women's body counts supports my theory, which is women don't have a whole phase; they only have a because because Phil, I want you to think about like this. Let's pull out a chart, right? On one side, we have number of actual relationships. Remember, now when I say relationship, Phil, I don't mean it's a guy you're smashing consistently, so he's your fuck buddy. No, no, no. An actual monogamous relationship, right? So let's have monogamous relationship on one side, right? Body count on the other. Phil, how many women do you think out there can have a, a, even something remotely even? No, no. I mean, it would have to be blind, deaf, dumb, have no vagina. Yep, so that's yep. The, the only way that that would happen because it, it's just too, it's too available. It's too easy, it, even when they're in, even when they're in a, a, a supposed monog monogamous relationship, you just think, oh, I like that guy. He's never going to know. So quick smash. Yep, and I know. Just about ninety nine point nine percent of them do that. That's and, I, and I'm not trying to be super red pilled or like or incel like a black pill, but. Um, it just seems to be that way. Now, I can remember a time when it wasn't so much like that mm -hmm. because, because there was a bit of shame involved if a woman did behave like that. But now with the whole feminism thing, you just go, girl, empowering. It's like, well, if there's no downside to it, why wouldn't they? So, yep. yeah, it makes sense. I mean, you look back, say, like, you know, in the various books of the Bible and stuff like that, what they try and teach you about, like, women, like we were talking about Eve or Fly. Yep. That kind of idea. So, like, don't give the woman the chance; otherwise, she's going to ruin everything. Well, it's the oh, so uh, Donovan Sharp said something once. Um, I think he, well, he said it a few times. He said, "Women's default setting is self destruction." And Phil, I started thinking about all the women I've known in my life, right? And I, I would argue that unless they got married young, zero percent of them are successful. And by successful, I don't mean money and career. I mean their mental health. 
right? Like, like, are they happy? Phil, I look around and I go like this. These bras are miserable. Because every choice they make is designed to do what, Phil? Like left unchecked, right? Like just like you said about, you know, not having a father, right? Left unchecked. What what choice do they make? They make the most impulsive choice possible, right? Short uh, short Short term. That might make a lot of sense, actually, because every woman wants to be swept off her feet by Christian Grey, doesn't she? Or her version of. Yep. So that would invite the big, bold knight to come in and save the day. But, of course, equality and egalitarianism means you can't actually do that, so they really are onto a self-destructive course. Well, Phil, you think about the uh, some of the things that they're saying and doing. Um, if if you were to look, how many women would you say, Phil, under the age of, say, 40, don't have tattoos? <laughs> I can remember if it took me back 20 years in the UK, it would be a good percentage, but that's that's like dwindling into a single figure digit now. Okay, okay, let me ask you this. Can you think of any woman who's, like I said, we're not talking about someone your aunt's age or something like that. Just women in in in, in a certain, let's say, like I said, let's say between 20 and 40. Can you think of any of them who do not have tattoos on their body? Oh, well, I was just thinking an example of uh, the equivalent of my local Walmart walk down mm-hmm. there. There's a couple of cuties in there. And it, it just kind of had that sort of facial look of a sort of maybe traditional conservative woman. And it wasn't until she was helping me out at the uh, the cashier that I could see the tattoos on her hands. And I thought, yep. oh, God. You know what that means, don't you? Mm. So, so, Phil, to to correlate, because there's some, you know, for the, everyone who's going to watch this show who may or may not know, to correlate, Phil, is have you ever met a woman with tattoos, who's especially heavily tattooed, who is not promiscuous? They're, they're worse than that. They're damaged psychologically. Correct. Damaged. Now, these chicks are fun to smash. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, uh, don't, don't stick your di- dick in crazy, Drex. What's that, Phil? If, if you do, if you stick your dick in crazy, to in, out, do a whole sort of uh, clockwork orange and get out of there as soon as you can. Yeah, make you know, sure she doesn't know where you work, your real address. Yeah, yeah you, don't, you don't want her to know shit about you. Um, and, and this is the reason why, um, you know, I was thinking about this, Phil. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm headed to Columbia. And, you know, you've traveled. You know, we all travel, right? Do you notice that every time we travel, we always are looking for knowledge, wisdom, culture? Like, men in general don't go for sex tourism. They really don't. Uh, unless you're heading to Thailand to smash a lady boy. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Guys going to Thailand primarily are there for sex tourism. I agree. Um, some that go to Brazil are there for that. But, but overwhelmingly, most men, when they travel, like, that's an aside. Like, like, like if it comes as part of the package, a guy probably won't turn it down, but that's not his purpose in going. Have you kind of found that that in, in your life, Phil, in terms of when men travel versus when women travel? I mean, admittedly, um, I'd been to Rome before, so I knew a lot of the sites and stuff, but I took a girl with me one time. We're just there for the day. I literally mm-hmm. fly in, see the sites fly out, because it's not that far from the UK. Yep. And she, at, at first I thought, right, well, we need to go here, and we went there few different spots and all she wanted to do is very very quickly get there take a few photos so she could put it up on a facebook page and then straight off to the next one there was no actual experience of being in rome so i had to like said but no right your day's done now we're going to sit down have a meal have some uh, homegrown italian wine and actually experience what it's like to be here okay then but spoiler alert you're not with her anymore (laughs) oh god no but the the validation that she wanted from her girlfriends was much greater than to sit in Rome and actually experience the culture of Rome, which I thought right. was a waste of time. Well, it, it's just a matter of of what we seek out of life. Um, and and Phil, I think do you know where you can really find the uh, the prevalence of this is uh, go look at like you know your red pill channels and all that, right? It's men trying to make sense of everything and then better themselves, right? And, and, and to spread the word to other men. It's not about usury. It's not about you know bitterness. It's about getting past bitterness, right? You go look at a lot of these women's channels. Here's makeup. Here, it's, it's like it's very everything is superficial. There, there's no deep thinking. Oh, <laughs> Dick Masterson plays an awesome game on uh, Twitch Thoughts. We you know painting their tits or whatnot, and mm-hmm. uh, he plays the game. At what age was she molested? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, right? Uh, yeah. They're yeah, so yeah. broken. 
Phil, I want your take on this. <sighs> Look, we've all done it. And that's why that's my next series is, is, is Don't Stick Your Dick in Crazy. And uh, I'll have to get you on for a special episode of that, maybe for the finale. Of, uh, and, and like I said, I'm going to have guys uh, call in with their stories. Um, maybe they could just like record th their story. That should be interesting. Phil, what do you think is it in men? We're like, do you believe that it is actually, you know, just like I said, you know, women's default setting, uh, like Donna Sharp said, is self destruction. Do you think men have this default setting of either like, I have to conquer this thing that I know is all messed up because we can see a girl who's clearly damaged, right? With the, you know, the she's got bull ring through the nose, tatted everywhere, but she's got nice tits and a nice ass, right? We know she is toxic. And the guy goes, eh. <laughs> Well, it comes down to the basic uh, human sexual dynamic, I suppose, right? She's all about um, like utility, and there's a lot of showing off that goes on, external validation for her. Like, oh, look, I'm yep. a big alpha guy. I'm with him. Now, you get the same woman and say, right, you're, I'm going to let you have a relationship with a big alpha guy, but you, no one's ever going to know. And if any, yep. any, you tell anyone, we're going to shoot your parents, we're going to shoot everyone that you love. She'll go, oh, well, what's the point then? So a lot of validation goes on from her perspective. Now, from his perspective, he's thinking just the the biological sensation of smashing that is going to be amazing so he's all about the, the like the experience if you like rather yep. than the validation so where he's thinking about like yeah she's broken but man look at the titties <laughs> man must smash right so he's all about the experience phil it's it's so true because i'll give you an example phil when i was on nick's show and there were some guys who were, were questioning you know, I, I guess they were kind of questioning my, uh, I don't know if you say morality or my sanity, but I was like, you got to understand, all guys have the basic same hierarchy, right? So twins is the top, right? So, so if someone says, hey, hey, Phil, what is the absolute top that a man can get? You would say it'd be Swedish twins. twins. Yeah, 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 whatever your, your fancy is, like, like twins, right? Like, so identical twins would be like the, the, is the peak for a dude because it's the hardest thing to achieve, right? Like you think about it, Phil. A guy can go get a girl. A guy can get multiple girls. A guy can get all kinds of things. There's not that many twins on planet Earth, let alone attractive ones, let alone attractive ones that are down to smash you at the same time. You see what I'm saying? So that would be the top. And then you could argue next would be like, like mother-daughter combo, right? Now, obviously, these women are broken. You, <laughs> but Phil, you know the hierarchy, right? Phil, you know the hierarchy, right? Like, there are certain places that you can go where a woman will tell you, you would never believe my age. And you're like, uh, 35? And she's like, I'm 51. You're like, holy shit, really? Like, Phil, have you ever seen those women who just, they, they ate, like, uh, Christy Brinkley is in her 60s. Have you seen what she looks like? Great. Uh, Elizabeth Hurley, she's, she's a Brit, right? Elizabeth yeah. Hurley looks great. I don't know if you've seen her recently. She looks great. Again, for, for the age, looks pretty good. But, um... I've had a few, I suppose you'd call them semi-fleeting relationships, perhaps, with uh, girls from Southeast Asia. Mm -hmm. and there was a couple of girls that were older than me at the time, and I was in my 30s. I was like, really? I, I had her pegged as 25, maybe 26, yeah. 27. But, of course, when they hit the wall, it, 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 oh, it, oh. it hit the chasm of hell at that time. Phil, i got a question for you. What do you think it is it, uh, <laughs> what do you think it is about Asian women in particular that – Stave off the wall, stave off the wall, stave off the wall some more. And then they just fucking hit at full speed. Like, you saw her when she was 37. She looked great. Like, God damn, she looks great. And then you were out and about. You were selling dolls. And then you came back two years later. And you went, what the fuck happened? She looks like a grandma. <laughs> like, like, yeah. like, nothing, nothing happened, right? Like, just, just two years pass, and they just hit the wall. Like, like, what is it about Asian women? I think they get absorbed, assimilated by the wall and become the wall, whereas all, all the Western chicks just bounce off and break. <laughs> yeah. All right. In celebration of our uh, Don't Stick in uh, Don't Stick Your Dick in Crazy uh, video series we're doing, probably starting at the end of the month, after Columbia, right, Drex? Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. When I come back from Columbia, I'm going to start that series. And, uh, yeah, so – I'm going to definitely up that fan interaction, and I want guys to – because because we can do that, right, uh, Tim? Email's the best way just because then I can filter through them. And yeah, filter filter the story out. 
Yeah. Or I can remove the doxing info ahead of time. Yeah, 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 yeah. The you best can... way to get something on the show because then I can, uh, like, I read them all. I, I read them three, four times. Uh, we've got some gems in this week. We'll get to them later. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I wanted to ask Phil first, though, in celebration of Don't Stick Your Dick in Crazy. Phil, what is your best Don't Stick Your Dick in Crazy story you have? Um, I'm fairly well adjusted for that because um, when I was back in IT and business, I would, I would be, like, often the only white guy, like, in the borough. So, of course, I would have all sorts of crazy coming after me. But um, I started to learn to um, to carry a false wallet with me, and I would leave it <laughs> lying around. Wait, 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 wait. You do the Maddox? You do the Maddox thing? <laughs> it, 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 it sends them off on a cold trail, and you never hear from them again. That's great. Wow. Damn. So, uh, for background, uh, do you know who Maddox is? Did Maddox and Dick Masterson? Yeah. Okay, so Maddox in one of the biggest problem episodes said that when he travels to, like, Mexico, uh, he carries a fake wallet in case he gets mugged. That that was my first reason for doing that, because I've been in and out of some dangerous areas, but um, it, it's know. a good idea. I don't idea. know if that's actually a, if that's an effective thing. Look, no, no one mugs you, looks at the wallet and says, okay, I got what I need, I'm out. They're like, oh no, what else do you got? I'll take your watch. I'll take whatever, whatever you, you know, got they, in your pocket. They, they, they might get pissed that you have a false wallet, right? And then shoot you. Yeah. <laughs> what is this? I don't know if that's <laughs> actually a good idea. You, you would have to have really inspect it, though, because what I do is when my cards expire, I, I put them in the false wallet. So they're not even valid. Oh. They can't even be used. So oh, it's yeah, not like card cutouts or anything like that. Okay. I look, oh, like yeah. put a couple of 20s in there or something like that. So there's a couple of notes. And so if somebody sticks a knife in your, to your chest, there you go. And he's away. Yeah. Uh, I like that. <laughs> so a fake like wallet that. for crazy. Do you have uh do you have a don't stick your dick in crazy from anyone you know? Someone you know who got was well, had this crazy broad stock in them? Um the near it's it's not terribly crazy, but I won't anyone who's taken the red pill will just see this one and go, Oh no, don't, don't. Um I shared an apartment with an ex work colleague for a while. And about I don't know, five years ago or so. Um, no, about six years ago, an old university friend of his used to jump on the train, come down, and she would stay over for the weekend. Now, I was living in a two-bedroom apartment, so there's my bedroom, there's my friend's bedroom. So she wouldn't, like, sleep on the sofa or anything. She'd sleep in the bed with my friend. I was like, dude, be careful. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know MGTOW and stuff like that, and you think I'm a woman hater, but... Just be careful. So what she would do is she would encourage him, say, like, bring some money over and say, oh, come on, let's go out. Let's, Because no. her idea was let's get, let's get coked up and get some alcohol in. And then she would start playing with him in bed, get him hard, then she'd ride him like a fucking horse. Funny enough, she fell pregnant, and everyone saw it coming. Uh... And it was like, dude, don't let it happen. No, it won't happen. She's, you know, she's an old uni friend. It's not like that. So, and you It's know, always yeah, like that. Know, I wasn't hearing any sex noises or anything like that. Everyone was just like, oh, she's trying to get pregnant. Even the, the sort of like uh, girlfriends, uh, friends who were girls, who kind of knew this guy said, oh, that's exactly what she's doing. Lo and behold. And I mean, it's not so much stick your dick in crazy, but she's crazy enough to get him coked up and then fueled up on yeah. alcohol. And and now he's living with her. He He kind of feigns like a sort of pseudo love for her because he wants to keep the family unit together because now they've got a little oh. girl. So we make just... so many sacrifices as men. We do. Yeah, but, but you know, though, I think that that's why the, the guys who do decide to Minecraft themselves, I think in some ways they might be ahead of the curve, man. Because, Bill, you know that there's guys that look into like a crystal ball and they can see their life and they're like, you know what? <laughs> Fuck it. <laughs> that's actually a good transition over into uh, uh, we're classified as a self-help podcast so hmm. before we get into news and advice questions i just want to quickly touch on the whole what is the whole idea of migtow anyways we've we've thrown the acronym around a lot is it an idea is it a state of mind is it a philosophy is it a set of rules to live by or more guidelines what exactly is migtow uh to both you guys, uh, Drex, start with you. I've always felt that it is um, it is a philosophy and a standard of a set of rules and guidelines to follow based on the world around you. And you that's why they always say go your own way, because 
what it means to me may be different than what it means to Phil, but our basic tenets remain exactly the same. No cohabitation, don't marry these broads, blah, blah, blah. You know, don't be a simp. Like those are like the 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 structures that keep you in line. Within that, you go like that, you find what makes what uh constitutes your own happiness, right? So what constitutes my happiness may not be what constitutes someone else's happiness, right? So that's the reason why if you've ever seen me clap back at some of Nick's uh viewers when they're like, you know, they project what they want onto everyone. That's why they believe every guy in the world wants to be Nick Ricada and have five kids and live in the middle of fucking nowhere. I don't. Okay. And, and, and there are people out there who can't, like they can't accept that. Like, well, what do you mean? You don't want a family. I don't, I don't want to be married. I don't want a family. No, because I smash enough married broads and I know enough married people. And it started with my parents at my parents turned me off of the idea of marriage ever since I was a child and, and being around my aunts and uncles. Right. Because I saw black women and how they treated their black husbands. I was like, okay, we're going to start here. I will never, ever, 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 ever do relationships with black chicks. So they set the standard, right? So then you think, oh, maybe it's black chicks. You start to go around enough, and Phil knows this is true. They're all the same. You, you just trade in one set of issues with another set of issues. So I said, you know, I'm going to go my own way because, I, I, as I told you guys before, uh, what turned me off of relationships was I got tired of the fuckery, which is the – the the accusations of cheating, which I never did. The the shit test. Phil knows about all this, right? The, the endless shit test. The the emotional, uh, uh, you know, roller coaster shit where she's cool one minute and she's going crazy the next. I'm like, I don't got time for this. So I just went like this. Women are a as as a collective, not every single individual woman, but women as a collective are a liability. And in this life, you need to go like this. Who in my life and what in my life is going to be an asset and who in what in my life is going to be a liability? And you destroy all relationships with liabilities and you enhance your relationships with all of the assets. That's what, what uh, MGTOW meant to me. You go like this. If, if selling dolls gives Phil fulfillment, I would just encourage him, bro, keep selling your dolls. If traveling, making money, doing live streams, uh, travel around the world and all that kind of stuff, take care of my daughter, that's what gives me fulfillment. I'm sure Phil would be saying, hey, do you? It, it, like, neither one of us is telling each other, you need to get married, Phil. You need to have kids, Phil. You need." I don't say that. Phil doesn't say I, I, The only people that say that are blue pill simps because they're controlled and they want you to be dragged down into the same misery that they're in. That's my take. What about you, Phil? Well, Nick, tell men going your own way is essentially uh, an ideology of uh, finding your own path to what I would describe as happiness. And um, there's a lot of times I've, I've asked men, what is it that you want out of life? You know, whether it's an activity, a profession or whatever, do you know what that is? Doing that for the rest of your life, that's gonna make you happy. Now, there's a few people who will then say, oh, uh, having a family and having kids. And they just leave it at that and say, right, okay, well, what's she like? What personality traits has she got? Because if you don't know what all these things are, how can you traverse your own path to happiness? And um, I've kind of drawn the line, and this caused a bit of consternation within the Red Pill community, saying that like we've got young boys going their own way. And I, or even some young men who are virgins going their own way. Now, okay, they might have been rejected by women, but I, I don't know if that's possible to be a virgin and go your own way because you haven't left anything. You haven't even gotten there yet kind of idea and I was kind of, a lot of the youngsters were like uh, having a bit of a go at me the reasoning I used if you were a pickup artist and you, you're going through all the methodology but you've never led a single chick yet are you actually a pickup artist or are you just training there's a yeah, difference yeah, I tend to think the same with me and once you've like kind of had that say even well, even if just having sex and maybe not even a real, real relationship, at least you're walking away from something. And you're doing that to gain happiness because the, all the shit tests and all the rest of it that you get through women and the expectation of uh, society for you, you've got to get away from the hate. And I, this is how I distinguish a lot of uh, MGTOW from incels. The incels hate and they're the ones that actually want to like go go out there as shooters and actually kill women because of the hate that they have for the rejection by women. Whereas MGTOWs have looked at it and went, ah, oh, well, it's not for me. I'll tell you what, I'm going to go travel instead. And he's concentrating on himself. Um, 
and I still speak to a lot of MGTOWs and they're still bitching on about women. It's just like, leave them alone. Women are just doing women shit. To reiterate what TFM was saying the other day, um, if you give women the capability to thought around, they're going to thought around. It's like, if you leave the front door, the dog's going to go out and it's going to go out for like a play outside. That's just what dogs do. So you, you've got to kind of like restrict all that around and it's the system which is fucked. So you can't have authority over a family. So I tend to think that takes away a lot of the uh, capability to have a family. So if that's the case, if that's the way society wants it, again, I shrug my shoulders and say, well, I'm just walking away. I mean, yep. I am selling dolls, I suppose. I'm, I'm not too sure if that's my passion as such, but it's it's better than working for a living. But um, I'd, one of my ambitions I always had as a young man was to perhaps just have enough money to not do anything not have to do anything. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm fairly close to that. Just like, you know, I don't do that many hours worth of work in the day. I'm not working for a man or an idiot who doesn't know what he's doing. So I'm, I'm kind of happy. And there's no women interacting with me. Someone, you know, even a feminist can get up in my face and say, I don't like what you do. I'm going to tell your boss speaking. <laughs> yep. So I'm in the master of my own destiny, which is where I, I think a lot of MGTOW should lie. So that's why I encourage a lot of people, if you can't run your own business. It's uh, that's a great um, transition into our first advice question because you were talking about you were talking about virgins, and we got an email from one, uh, twenty six year old male, uh, never been in a relationship, never smashed. He works out frequently. He's got a stable engineering job, but he just doesn't doesn't know how to get the door open, get things going with women. Doesn't have any dating uh, luck on dating apps. Good, stay off the dating apps. Yeah, yeah, don't do that. How can a guy like me go out and actually engage? And uh, what do I need to do to draw attention? Look, if you're making as good money as you say you are, just fucking show up to a bar in like a thousand dollar three piece suit, and fucking every woman within a two mile radius will just immediately come towards you. Then you can be picky. Well, the thing about that though is that uh, once once they're gonna look at you as a mark. And that's what you don't want, though. So it's it's a delicate balance. I'm sure Phil knows this, that it's like the guy who says, I want to get noticed by women, so I'm going to pull up in a Lamborghini. Well, now women have, like, so, so a man pulling up in a Lamborghini is the equivalent of a woman walking into a bar with a big sign that says free pussy, right? So now they're going to objectify you completely. Like, 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 like you are not even a human to them anymore on both sides. So what I would tell this guy is, look, being a virgin, I, I'm not going to shame any guy for being a virgin. If, if anything, he's he's basically he's actually winning uh, with, with these modern women because I mean dealing with them is is a headache. But if he wants to engage, I would just tell him to just be about your purpose and just have like basic conversation. Because Phil, you know this. If you just can speak, and here's the big thing: make her fucking laugh. Just be confident. And make her laugh. Like you can literally remember you could in. in you can talk about whatever, but if you could make a girl laugh, Phil, think, Phil, have you ever had a girl who's mad at you and then you made her laugh and the whole the whole night changed? It, yeah, all, all that uh, hatred goes away. It goes away immediately. Like if, if you're saying like, look, oh, I don't know any good jokes. I can't be funny. Look, you were talking about how women just go take pictures of the Coliseum and the Leaning Tower and they don't actually learn anything about these. You could just Google famous comedian jokes and i guarantee you they've never heard them before well right? you, you can but you're gonna have to have like that comedian's charisma to pull it off yep. whereas there will be some stupid thing where you fell down a flight of stairs or like you know dropped a tray of drinks in front of people and just looked like a right dick be like the self-effacing sort of humor because then you'll be more likely to pull it off but my advice on this one was go out uh, pick a group of girls that you're not attracted to and just have a platonic conversation with them and when Correct. you've got that one nailed then you can work up to actually like trying to charm something. Yeah. Well, that, that's why I said like just, just interacting, speaking with them because you're right. Like one of the things I learned, Phil, um, you know, people have asked me about in, in my own life and I don't know if, if you've dealt with something similar, but I have friend zoned many women in my life. You know, everyone thinks that I'm just like running around here smashing chicks. I go, I have, I have, I've turned down far more women than I've ever smashed. I'm just like, eh, nah, not my type, or I'm just not in the mood for that today, or whatever. Well, like, it's, it's good practice, though, isn't it? Because if you say yes all the time, then they expect that you're going to say yes all the time. Yep. When you start to say no, then they've got a hurdle to overcome. Yep. Oh, you know, Phil, actually, you know, before we get to the next question, something on that topic, um, 
here goes something that you'll love. Uh, I was talking to uh, one of the subscribers about this, which is going to Columbia. There was a gal uh, who had made a comment about like, you know, oh, you're going to Columbia. You know, you must be going out there to smash chicks. And I said, like, no, I'm just going to be hanging out with one. And have you ever encountered this field where like if you have a certain reputation and every you know, everyone knows my rep. I do not play games with these fucking females at all. You see what I'm saying? I don't play games with them. So, so I don't cohabitate. I don't, I don't do all that stuff. And I also, I don't travel with women. It, it's a big thing. It's a big deal for me. If someone asked me, Hey, Drex, I want to go with you to, you know, pick up a place or a country or whatever. Right. My answer is always no. However, she was baffled. Cause she's like, well, I mean, that's not what you do. I said, listen, the rules and you know this field it's similar to sports the rules are different based on what you can provide right a, a great asset on a, on a football team is going to be treated differently than than the last man on the bench right he fucks up one time he's gone but but the guy who's the superstar he may have gotten a dui he may have been doing something stupid on the weekend but we'll excuse that because he's different right he, he's bigger he's a bigger asset and yeah, and women don't like that comment. Like women don't like that feeling of inadequacy. Like I can't reach that level. You, you ever had that in your own life, Phil? Where you know, like a, a you know, a woman saw you, Mister Dapper Brit, who is, you, you know, inter- engaged in entertaining certain things with with a, a particular woman, and they know that they can't do that with you. Have you ever had that happen? Um, it's been in more of a sort of flirtatious sort of engagement, where. Ooh, there's been a little bit of chemistry going going on, but the the evening had to get cut short. So next week we kind of met up, and she's just hoping to carry on. And she she I forget what it was that she said, but she just turned me right off like that. Mm. And I mean, it, I didn't shut her down or anything like that. I just kind of closed it. And said, no, I'm just not into that anymore. I don't know. It, it just doesn't feel right, kind of thing. So then all of a sudden it was like, oh really? So then she starts turning up the uh, the ante kind of idea. Just think, I don't, yep. I'm not having a guy say no. And it's just like, now you're trying too hard. Now you're really turning yep. me off. Just went like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, you know, in platonic relationships matter. Like, I would tell this guy to, uh, you know, he's an engineer. Tell him to start talking to women platonically. And Phil is 100% right. Like, that's why I, I said initially, I just said, talk to him. Just talk. Like, if you can have platonic relationships, do you know what it does? It takes away that anxiety of, oh, my God, it's a woman. Because like you said, Phil, imagine this this guy, he's 26. By the time he's 27, he's used to talking to women, right? So now the only difference is that this one is just more attractive than than just I know, you know, a one that's not he's attracted to, right? And, and that does matter. It matters quite a bit. It's just that 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 familiarity. I agree. <laughs> okay, so the next set of emails here, these are great. These are gold. Uh-oh. <laughs> so the first story was uh Guy who uh guy who paid for a black hooker. Oh fuck, man. Okay, I love the reaction because you know exactly where this is going. Um uh, negotiated down uh to 60 from 80. So they found a quiet place uh where she could give him head. Wait, wait, hold on, hold on, wait, wait, wait. You mean negotiated down from 60 to 80? Yeah. Don't you mean negotiated? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. My bad, my bad, my bad. Yeah, negotiate down from sixty. Yeah, eighty to sixty. Okay, down yeah. to sixty from eighty. Yeah, down to sixty. Yeah, from eighty. Yeah, okay, gotcha. So he finished. He finishes uh, in her mouth. She stands up and spits it back into his face. <laughs> oh, he says the swallow costs eighty. You cheap ass mofo. <laughs> he said he's never been more afraid of black women. Oh shit! <laughs> um, Phil comments. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't going back. I would have to say that. I mean, to be honest, it depends where you are, what neighborhood you're in. But um, that's some brass balls on that girl because she could lose teeth doing that. Yeah. Phil, could you ever imagine getting with an American black woman? It's something I haven't done. I've, I've had a number of uh, black girlfriends from Africa, but not not the Americas. Yeah, American black women are a special, very special breed. Of humans, uh, don't be disrespectful to humans. They're not human. They're demons. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's probably what gets us Susan. Finally, <laughs> they're, they're horrible, Phil. Phil I, you know what I want you to do, Phil? I, I kid you not, man. I really wanted you to be with us in Tampa because I want you to see these demonic, savage creatures in their natural habitat in Ybor City, Florida. 
Nick will tell you, Phil, the the, the, the level of degeneracy and and and, and uh, uh, obesity and ratchetness that the American black fee fail displays. Phil, the only true renewable resource on earth is BFF, black female fuckery. It is endlessly renewable. When, when someone says, hey, Phil, we're running out of fossil fuel. We're running out of the, there's all, you know, we, we, we run out of helium, right? We're running out of helium right now, right? It's, it's a finite resource. I can assure you, you can replace all of that with black female fuckery. Even the sun is gonna burn out someday. <laughs> It's probably black as well. female fuckery will not. Because if I was in town, I'd have a few beers. I'd start to get a bit warm, and then I'd start pretending to be David Attenborough from Wild Life <laughs> from One, and start doing a YouTube video on them. And I get my teeth kicked in. I know I would. Oh man, Bill, you you got to go where they're at. These emails get better from there. Oh shit! So another hooker. <laughs> Bill does the head nod. <laughs> <laughs> so we got another hooker story in the email box. So he's uh, the guy's driving around looking for a hooker, not having any luck, and he sees a woman standing alone on the street corner. So he gives the sign, right? And she gets into his car, and he realizes that she's crying, and apparently she just had a huge fight with her boyfriend. And oh. then she's like, "Well, what do you want?" And and he says, "Well, I'm looking for a hooker." And she's like, "Oh, I don't do that." Gave her a hundred dollars, and she did that. Oh. But she she was crying the whole time doing it. Oh, God. But women will do this. <laughs> when, when they break up with the boyfriend, she'll what, the first guy they come in contact with is it's, it's sniffing in anywhere. Right, you'll do. I'll fuck you just to get back. You'll do. Why the fuck did someone get into a stranger's car like that? It's a female. Okay, what did Donovan Sharp say? What's their, what's their default setting? Self-destruction. So... Hey Phil, do you remember back in uh, reading about all the serial killers of the, uh, the the 70s and 80s? Right? Do you remember? You know, they they always preyed on women because they were the easier targets, right? But do you remember the actions that the women were doing when they were getting killed? I didn't want these women getting killed. Don't get me wrong, but they made it a lot easier to get Minecraft, right? Did you ever notice that? Like, oh, I got in this stranger's car. Like, like, like the things they were doing, like a logical sane person would not do, right? Well, yeah, but women are kind of turned on by that sort of inherent danger, though, aren't they? Yeah, you, you, I'm glad you brought that up, Phil, because I think, do you notice that, like, I, I've, um, I'm going to do a show on uh, hybristophilia, right? Which is, you know, this, this thing where women get sexual arousal from uh, dealing with thugs and danger and all this stuff. It's the reason why women are attracted to broken, toxic, you know, dangerous men, whereas the opposite is true. We avoid, Crazy, right? Like, like, now remember, there's there's levels to crazy. Like every that's why you know you know stick your dick in crazy does not uh, revolve around like an actual like woman serial killer, right? Because men don't want that, but women do. You, hey Phil, have you ever looked at uh, the, these guys who have committed these like horrible crimes? They always have tons of mail from women, right? Tons of mail. Every I want to marry you. Every time, it, the the opposite is not true. When a woman is 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 uh, convicted of committing some heinous crimes, guys want nothing to do with her. Like we're like, hey, I mean, I can stick my dick in a level of crazy, but not that crazy. Not not like you know, I could lose my life crazy. You know. Well, if only the men would put on the crazy spectacles, which actually allows you to see the level of crazy, then they would perhaps deal with a lot fewer women. Because they of- get a doll. They get it all. <laughs> <Yeah>. but, uh, <laughs> most most of these women who are in relationships just hide the crazy. That's the thing. They do. They, they, they do. let it out amongst the girlfriends when they all go out, and you know they've all got a mass sexual conquests. They got to watch a snapped marathon. And I can top that email too. Uh-oh. Oh God. <laughs> so, um, a, this person wrote in with a story from a friend. Uh, oh shit! Which means it's them, of course. <laughs> Phil, you know it's them. He got off a Me Too allegation because of his micro penis. Oh. It's so comically small that when the lawyer, his defense lawyer, uh, asked to see it, she couldn't stop laughing. Oh! <laughs> oh and then at the rape trial, when uh, they asked her to describe it, and she just described a generic-looking penis. And then he didn't put the picture I, up. I did he? he doesn't say that the photos were shown to the jury, but um, or the judge. I don't know if it was jury or judge. Trial, you would have but, to, though, wouldn't you? You have but, to. Yeah. Oh, 
uh, basically, well, yeah. so he he got off he got off scot free. I mean, he did. So he so a micro penis got him out of an allegation. Yeah, but if you consider the situation, because your life is almost over when me too, yeah, you might as well. Old, you just think, hey, what am I supposed to do with that? And you go, yeah, ah, what about ah, what have I got left to lose? Right. Well, didn't wow. did Weinstein try this? Did he? The, he was complaining that physically he wasn't up to it, so they had to see like naked photos of him and stuff like that. I mean, it didn't work ultimately, wow. but that was part of the defense. Wow! Didn't they do that to Michael Jackson too when he was on? I heard for, something uh, about like his dick is uh, like, like like white and black or some weird stuff. They were yeah, so, I don't know what skin, he's got a skin condition that turned his Correct. Black skin white. Yeah. Um, it was all everything about the Michael Jackson trials were weird, uh, you know. And here's my my biggest problem with that is that like you know there are people saying whatever about Mike, but he was investigated by the FBI for a decade and they came up with nothing. And yet, in, in Phil, you saw all those those kids like they would always come back later after they admitted to lying on Michael, and then like when Oprah does a documentary to try to you know destroy his name, oh I I made it all up like like I I said he did it, then I admitted that I made it up because my parents wanted to get money. Now I'm saying that it really did happen again. I mean, based on the stuff they found yeah. at Neverland Ranch, that guy was weird. I'd never want him around children. No, no, no but, and, and therein lies the point, though. But like, so Nick and I have talked about this. Whereas, I, Phil, I can go like this. If someone says, hey, Drex, do you believe he did it? I go, honestly, if the feds investigated him for a decade and found nothing, I would say, I would tend to believe that if, if the feds wanted you to bury you, they would have buried you. So if they didn't, I'm going to have to assume that he didn't molest children. However, if you ask me the question, hey, would you ever want your kids around Michael? Fuck no. <laughs> no. I don't want my kids around a, a, a 50-year-old weirdo who wants to sleep in the bed with children. No. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, by the way, um, on the New Year's Eve special, I asked you about your lifting routine. And you, oh, yeah. um, you, you didn't exactly answer the question. Like, wh oh. what is uh, your schedule at the gym? So do you do, oh, so do you have a set schedule? Do you have like leg day, uh, upper yeah, yeah, day? Yeah, so, yeah. So typically... Typically, um, for me, because like I don't get to lift the way I used to, where you know, you know, before I had a kid and everything, I was in the gym all the time, and and now I have to go like this. It's you know, leg, you know, it's gonna be you know, leg day, and then uh, you know, arms day or whatever, right? So like, after we do this show, I'm, I'm actually headed to the gym because this is gonna be my last official workout before I go to Columbia, and then once I go to Nick's tonight, uh, I'll just be doing like you know, body weight exercises. So the thing I've always done is this: you pick your muscle groups. And if you're trying to, you know, make sure that you you do like supersets. If you're trying to like, like I said, whether it be build muscle, are you trying to strength? Are you trying to tone? Whatever your goal is, you have to set your workout to that goal. So if I look at Phil, Phil looks like the kind of guy that if you're going to the gym, you look like the kind of guy that's more into like the whole tone thing, right, Phil? Like, oh, I just go to the gym just to, you know, keep in shape to keep keep tone, right? Apparently, there's such a thing as a gym, but I've never been one. Whereas a guy like Tim, I would say bodybuild. That was a drive by. At me. Well, well, like, like, well, well, Tim, 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 your body type, your body type is designed for power. Like yeah. you like, have a, you have a like, power like, lifter's body. None of this is from weightlifting. This is just my natural body. No, that's what I'm saying. A guy like you, if if I if you were to, okay, if I'm your personal trainer, I would give the exact opposite directions to you that I would give to Phil because your body type is different. Like, unless you came to me saying, yeah, Drex, I want to lose, you know, 20 pounds. If you said, I want to get buff, I would go, Tim, this is what you're going to do to get buff. But if Phil came to me, you know, if Phil said he wanted to gain weight, like, you know, gain, gain bulk, I would say, hey, here's what you need to do. Here's some anabolic bulk. steroids, uh, whatever happens, <laughs> happens. <laughs> no, Phil seems like that naturally skinny guy. The the one that everyone hates, right? He He could eat like a triple Belgian chocolate cake and not gain a pound from it. That's me. Yeah, I, I, I can't gain weight. Yeah. I can't gain it. It's All, all you got to do is just, so in your body type, Tim, you would just go, you would trim first and then bulk up and build muscle. Because like, like you you already have the body. Like, like you, okay, your body type is what like a, um, like, you know, in American football, you have like the body of a running back, a tailback. Yeah. The guy who's going to, you know, between the tackles. Or a linebacker. That, that, Line, or a linebacker if, if you were linebacker. taller. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If, if you were taller, you would be a linebacker in American football because of your body type. You're either going to be a stocky build. Like, that's what gets a certain job done. So, like, the guy asking, you have to know what you're trying to lift for. I was considering a power lifter for you. 
Yeah, that, that, that's what I'm saying. Like, like yeah, he, he has that bulk body, like that that body that's going to get that power. So you'd make a good rugby player. Speaking of which, Drex, when you're uh, bench pressing, how many thoughts do you put on the barbell? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Phil, I got to be honest with you. Um, I try not to do heavy on the bench because I believe it creates bad habits. I believe that if men spend too much time on the bench press, they're going to get used to being on their back, pushing up large amounts of weight. And they're going to start really getting into BBWs. <laughs> What's your take on that, man? Oh, well, I, I, I wouldn't know. Not being a well, well, Phil, you, you saw the, you saw the face sit video, right? You, you mm. saw that one where the, 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 Phil, I'm telling you, you would be amazed at what happens. Like, okay. Do you know, in, in the, uh, in the uh, psychological field, they have what they refer to as like these, these trigger points, right? These, these things that, that happen in your life, it triggers a certain response, right? Do you know what happens if a guy gets used to really throwing up a lot of heavy weight? Do you know what happens to him? At some point, he likes the sensation of, I like that, right? And then, Phil, something's going to happen to him. He's going to be playing around with a fat chick to prove how strong he is. Oh, I can live you. Oh, I know you can't live me. No man can live me because I'm a lot of woman. Watch. And then maybe his arm gets a little tired, Phil. She kind of halfway falls on him. And he's like, oh, oh, fuck. Oh, shit. All that, all that weight falling on my face. Phil. Trigger point, right? But, 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 Bill, have you ever dealt with a girl who discovered that she was into something through something just very innocent, right? She got smacked or something. Something happened. Like, like I'll give you an example. You can be playing around, and she goes, I, I liked being tied up. She could have been playing with her, her nieces and nephews, right? Hey, yeah, yeah, you're the prisoner. We're tying you up. Oh, my God, I liked feeling helpless. Like, what the fuck? And it, Phil, these things happen. You've heard these stories, right? Where they, you, you heard about that that chick who was a church pastor, and now she's a stripper and on OnlyFans. Oh yeah, yeah. Phil, there's triggers. Like, like people think that I'm joking about this shit. If you want, like, Phil, you can smack a girl on the ass right now, and she like, you've been around the, the, the so called alpha female types, right, Phil? It's all a big shit test, right? The moment you exert dominance, what happens to them? Oh, generally melt. They melt. They become little puppies. It's a trigger. Yeah, I'm tough. No, it, it's kind of like what you said earlier. There are women out there, Phil, who have never been told no in their entire life. Every guy has been a simp from their father to all the beta orbiters. I think that's most of them now, to be honest. That's most of them. Because the, the entire societal um, indoctrination that we have is that, you know, the future is female, the force is female, everything's female. Yep. So you can't say no to the female. So they become yep. entitled. Yep. And, and so, They're so, actually but, winning but, the Phil. transgender war. Like they're getting trans uh, trans women kicked out of their sports. Could you Only imagine, temporarily. Could, could, well, could you imagine try us as men trying to get trans women kicked out of something like the Boy Scouts? We lose every time, right? Yeah, yeah men are going to lose but every somehow time. Somehow they get thing. to win. They win that fight somehow. Well, well, remember though, they're only going to win a couple of battles because what's going to happen is the lawsuits will start coming because when someone says, "Hey, I am I'm biologically female." That means they can't compete against men, right? So, so like, like, okay, um, Caitlyn Jenner, right? If Caitlyn Jenner were younger, Caitlyn Jenner would not be allowed to compete against men, right? They would say, well, you're clearly not a, a man. And then they go, but he can't play against women because that's a, that's a dude. Okay, so now you can't have a trans league because there's not enough people, right? Do you know what I would pay for a trans-only rugby league? <laughs> oh my god phil phil million million pound idea right there go get it go get it done well well phil did you see the rugby player did you see the rugby player um who's like six six five uh blonde dude Wait, hold on hold on my bad not dude uh stunning and brave woman and did you ever see that i, uh, I think uh, i want to say she she is uh i want to say like swedish you know what I'm talking about, right? Like 6'5". Rug if you just look up trans rugby player, Phil, I shit you not. Imagine me as a white dude with blonde hair playing rugby. It it yeah. looks freakish. Look at uh, – Drex, you might get this reference. I don't know if Phil watches American football, but um, it's like Derrick Henry playing against 12-year-olds. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, because – so, so, Phil, Derrick Henry is, is oversized for a running back, right? Like, you know, running backs have, are supposed to have a certain look. It's like when Magic Johnson was playing point guard. A point guard is only like six foot, you know, even. 
and then Magic shows up at six nine, but he's really like seven foot tall, playing running the point. It looks absurd. That's how it looks. Absurd. It's like it's like <laughs> no one's gonna stop this. Like no one's gonna say anything. Nobody. Come on, man. Do you ever watch American football, Phil? The nearest I ever got to it was when I was in the uh, the pub industry. I had uh, there was a local university had an American football team. Every couple of weeks, they'd, they'd have a game. They'd come down to my pub and get all beered up and eat food and stuff like that. So, but the thing is, it was in a fairly um, that's a racist, rough area. So I, I was used to having a few unsavory types in the pub, and they were all little kittens when the American football team came in because these guys were monsters. <laughs> well, the, the size gap, Phil. I, I don't think people understand. Um, you know, there, there are people out there who are, you know, they, they sit on their couch and they try to, you know, say that guys should be this, that, and the other, and these guys suck and they're not good enough. I was like, have you ever seen these guys in real life, like up close to person? Phil, they're monstrous. And when these guys hit you, you wonder why these guys had these absurd injuries. Like, hold on, I don't know why that guy's hurt for, for all season. He only took one hit. It's like, yeah, but he took a hit from a guy who's 350 pounds running at the same speed of a little guy. Phil, they're, they're genetic mutants. Excellent. Vince Wolfer is a good example. Vince Wolfer yeah. could literally pick dudes up who are 300 yeah. pounds and push them into the quarterback. Yeah. Well, did you see, uh, uh, if you want to see something nice, Phil, to inspire your, your workouts, Look up, um, that was our man Debo in the Pittsburgh Steelers, um, uh, James Harrison. Look up the James Harrison workout. He had actual teammates on a fucking sled pull, pushing him. Oh, yeah, you want to talk about mutants, J.J. Watt? Mutant. Like, 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 mutant uh, uh, strength. Like, like, you, when you see something, that, like, like, it's like when you guys look at uh, Half Thor, right? Half Thor doing things that like they're supposed to be impossible, right? Like picking up trees and shit. But that's how big he is. You know, Half Thor's a mutant. I mean, that, that dude is fucking insane. Anyways, um, this next email, the introduction is written as "Hi" or "Hey, Drexy Pie." Oh dear, we know where this is going. Well, maybe you don't, because it's actually written by a dude. Oh, oh well. Huh. At least I it always made Phil like... spit his tea out. Yeah. <laughs> I saw you stop drinking the tea, Phil. I saw you uh, uh, hold up. Jazz music stops. That was like the record scratch in the first day. Of th Phil, listen to the 12 Days of Thought Miss. They're highly entertaining. They're great stories. Uh, the first day of Thought Miss has... So, Phil, you know this watching uh, random... Maybe you watch some random YouTube videos, but the overuse of the generic soundboard effects, right? The record scratch, the bruh, the, uh, you know, the, whole, the basketball, whole, the air horn, right? Yep. There is, in the first day of Thought Miss, the only legitimate use of a record scratch sound effect. <laughs> it is. I, I gotta admit. I've watched that one. <laughs> oh, you have. <laughs> so, for the art this week, I'm going to have our artist draw up uh, Drexel with a uh, blow-up safe-for-work picture of a blow-up doll and a speech bubble that says, still better than Cynthia. Yeah, that, that could be really sad damaging that one had that one come to pass well, well phil do you know what do you know what bothers me about society is that there's always this double standard that when when women are in the sense of they were violated and somehow right um it's it's a big everyone needs to care right but men are laughed at if it, okay let's just say i would have gone on and smashed a tranny right Let, let's say you know if miss san diego does not knock on that door and spare me a lifelong of of uh therapy right with with ken jennings because uh, be, uh, you, you don't psychologically recover. Like, uh, Phil, did you ever see the Hangover movies? Oh, yes. Do you remember when he, he panics when he finds out that he smashed a tranny? She's like, no, I put my <laughs> spam in you. And he starts freaking out. Or, like, you know, when, when Quagmire, uh, you remember, I don't know if you ever saw that Family Guy episode where Brian uh, realizes that he, his nose is so good that he can smell anything. So he becomes a, a, a police dog, right? And Quagmire shows up and he goes, he goes, you just had, he goes, you just came back from Thailand. You had sex with uh, two Filipino women and a man. He goes, you mean three Filipino women? And Brian just has like the, the, the stone face. <laughs> and Quagmire goes, oh my God. And he runs off because you can't psychologically recover as a dude. You never recover from that. You know, I mean, if, if, about it, if you were in my shoes and Thad's and, and you weren't spared, are you sure you can recover psychologically? If you knew like, 
if we were both in your shoes, we would have noticed the eight red flags that occurred beforehand. No, but here's the thing, though. Like I told you guys, though, Phil, when it comes to red flags... I, I don't know if you would. You, you wouldn't necessarily see them because when you're in that environment, because I've been in that, I've moved in those circles before, yep. it's, it's different to normal life. It really is. There's a lot of unusual things going on at the same time. Yeah, yeah. So, 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 so Tim, you got to understand this. Like when I was telling the story, that's why I set the stage of what is what kinds of things were going on. There's naked chicks walking around, naked dudes walking around, people smashing in rooms. So, like the the normal. Do you know what it almost is, Phil? In a sense, it kind of lowers your inhibitions and and, and uh, desensitizes you, so that that's why something like that would 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 kind of elude you, right? If I were in a Best Buy getting ready to go buy something and Cynthia approached, it'd be totally different because now something seems off, it's right? It's ma'am. It's ma'am. <laughs> it's, it, it, but, but, but Phil, a, a voice that's a little bit off, like, like now, remember, in, I'd be in the lighter setting, right? Because swing clubs are dark. <laughs> they're, they're very dark. So, 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 Tim, it's a club environment, right? So, so imagine I everything can't. around you is sexual. Everyone around you is wearing lingerie, and then the dudes are walking around naked with towels. So it's like, and people are drinking. The environment is so foreign to most people, and it's so different that until someone tells you, yo, this is out of whack, as an out, remember, I'm an outsider. And that's why I try to explain to people uh, during the first day of Thotmas when you're an outsider, like if I show up to, to the UK, Phil is my ambassador. He, he's basically like, 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 he's almost like my guardian because. Phil, could you imagine if a person didn't know where to go and they just went down the wrong wrong avenue in in London? They they can wind up in trouble, right? Like, what if you didn't tell them? You're just sitting right there, and they go like this, Phil. Because you didn't tell me it was it was unsafe. That's why I went down there, right? Exactly. So so and that that's the same environment. Just stay away from Birmingham. That's all I know. Yeah, There's right? a lot but, but, of London to see. You don't need to go to Birmingham. Well, well, but think about it. what if what if somebody doesn't read the papers and they just go over there going, oh, this is a, this seems like a nice place to be. It, it, there are people out there, and you know this, Phil. They they are that naive. They they just kind of go, oh yeah, I just kind of want to explore, just kind of see around. They don't know what's what. Like there are people right now that have no clue what the hell Gary Indiana is, right? I say Gary Indiana, they go, oh, what's that? I've heard of it. I don't know what it means. And they can just go, oh, I want to go to Gary because I've heard about it. They don't know why they heard about it because it's one of the most dangerous shithole places in human existence. So once they show up, they're like, oh, shit, I want to leave. Too late, you got robbed or killed. Or in this case, too late, you almost smashed a tranny. <laughs> let's let's get back to this Drexy Pie email. Oh, yeah, that's right, Drexy Pie. <laughs> that was my TFM oh my. Rant, uh, rant. Shout out to TFM. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, this guy wants to ask you about marriage. Uh, I know how you feel no. about marriage, but this is a bit different, I guess. First of all, no. If you say no. it's a bit different, you're just trying to convince yourself. Yep, um, just don't do it, but go ahead. I'm with a woman who wants to marry because she doesn't want her family to get anything if something happens to her. She has city, shitty siblings and a few douchebag kids that constantly screw her, hopefully not literally. Um, if something happened and we split, I don't think she would do anything. I think she probably she would. loves me enough. Yeah, 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 yeah. It sounds like this is a lot of words to get around to the idea that you're... It sounds like you're trying to convince yourself, not us. She's different. He's trying to convince himself. Uh, Phil, what's she your take on this She buy him guy? a PS4 Pro for Christmas. It's a long-worded um, description for this one's different, but they're all this one's the different. same. It's the same. It, trust me, if if it were right, and, and Phil, you know this. Do you know what I, I actually believe this? I want your take on this, Phil, before we get to the next email. Like going to Columbia, right? My My friend... And this, I think this is going to be what, what relationships between men and women, even, even when they're not like, you know, like, you know, monogamous, right? Just, women will have to put something on the line. And by something, I mean money, right? Like put, like you remember the, the dowry, right? Women will need to put money on the line. Cause, cause Phil, will it, would you trust a woman if she said, Phil, marry me. It's going to be so great. What do you put on the line? What do you mean? But what if she said, I have to put all my assets on the line so I can lose if you leave. All of a sudden now, she has something on the line, so she's going to act right. You see what I'm saying? If women have nothing to lose, they're not going to alter their behavior, man. So apparently, uh, we're going to have to shorten this email quite a bit because it's pretty long, but um, she has eight kids, of which only one of them belonged to the guy who sent the email in. Mm. 
I saw I saw Phil's <laughs> Phil. eye roll back to his Phil, head. come on. <laughs> so he helps out around the house. All her kids are quite a bit older, um, lazy, spoiled, entitled, blah, blah, blah. She was the product of a foster system and drug-addicted parents. She has attachment issues, and she goes out and buys stuff for him. So this year, she bought him a PS4 Pro and a RTX 3090 video card. Guys, Phil, you, you're in IT. You know what how hard that thing is to get, right? Well, yeah, but I mean, are you going to be like a sugar baby for this woman? <laughs> right? That sounds like it. Um, sounds like she's pretty well off. I don't know if she's cashing the... Uh, Child uh, those child checks. support checks from from eight I don't baby so. daddies. I, I think the I think all the men are just gone. But here's the thing: how old, how old are is heavy. she? Uh, she is ten years older than our emailer. Um, Jesus Christ! So I'm guessing forties. Okay, so he's likely. not that sexually attracted to her. Then, to be fair, it's no, just got to be. Why Why don't women believe men can go without sex? I confess to her that I haven't been anyone since I was 12 years old. Um, yeah, but, okay, so there's a lot of things going on in this email. So he's pussy whipped, first of all. Uh, to a woman who had eight kids? <sighs> yeah, th th there's a well, lot um, of stuff going on well, in this email here. So let's yeah, unpack yeah. the layers one at a time, all right? So first, let's look at her. Eight kids. There's there's been enough traffic through that pussy that the, it needs a fucking stoplight. It's probably got lights going all the way through it, so you can see all the way to the back. But what <laughs> yeah. what could possibly go wrong, really? I mean, this yeah. sounds she sounds like a catch, doesn't she? Yeah, uh, and you know what? The attachment issues is probably why she's doing things for you in her brain. I, I was about to say that. I yeah, you got to do all this stuff so that uh, I got to do all this stuff for him so I don't lose him. But yep. if there's ever a moment where she feels like she's going to lose you. That's when the crazy comes out. And then when and it she, ends, I want all of it back. And if uh, she's got money, which it sounds like she's got some level yeah, of income, a decent amount of it. then uh, she can always have you uh, worked over or bumped off, which yep. I suppose takes us to a, a story that actually happened in uh, Reading this week in the UK. I don't know if you guys caught it. Oh, what's that? I think it's like um, 13, 14-year-olds. Uh, boy's going out with girl. Girl starts sending nudes to another guy. They're supposed to be boyfriend and girlfriend. So he shouts at her. So she gets on to whatever social media network she's on, wants to have her boyfriend stabbed. Not killed, but just, you know, stab him. Of course, boy ends up getting killed, so everyone's being arrested. And this is yep. just because a guy shouted at, a, at his girlfriend for sending nudes to another boy. And that's, that's the UK. This is, you know, gun-free UK. Now, and if the 12, you know thirteen year olds can do this, I mean, what's he walking into? Right. Well, and so, uh, how old was the girl in this case? Is she fourteen as well, or is thirteen? Yeah, yep. Yeah, they're all kind of this, within a year's age of each other. What was it the the fifth day of thought miss or the seventh day of thought miss? I forget. But Drex, if they're sending, if they're blasting nudes out to everyone, how many years? Right. If she's comfortable blasting nudes out, uh, to oh, that was actually the first group, day. That was actually yeah. day twelve. Um, when uh, yeah, so so Phil, I'm, I'm, I don't know if you heard the very first edition, but it was uh, a friend of mine said she was on a plane and there was a the young twenty year old. She said attractive girl, sending and she's she said she was open about. It. She wasn't trying to like shield her phone or anything. She's looking right at yeah, her, sending nudes to multiple dudes. And the the story with uh, your brothers and that uh, that oh oh yeah 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 BJ yeah yeah so. When, when it comes to, to these chicks, Phil, you know this. The reason why, like, uh, let, let, let's actually just backtrack for a quick second. Phil, if the year were 1921, by the time you got a woman at 20, she had wife skills. Do you know why she had wife skills? Because A, she was trained to have wife skills, and B, she practiced them, right? She practiced cooking. She practiced cleaning, yeah. right? So, Phil, in 2021, 100, fast forward 100 years after feminism has destroyed everything, and beta cucks and simps have destroyed everything and enabled the feminists. The reason why a woman shows up to you, me, Tim, all the viewers out there who have a penis between their legs, the reason why they show up with only sexual skills is why, Phil? All she's got. 
that, that, that's that's all she's done, right? Like that, the only thing she so she's never practiced cooking food. If you wonder why these women can't cook, you go like so, so watch this, Phil. Damn, Phil, my name is Joe Blow. Every woman I meet, they can't cook, they can't clean, they don't know how to treat a man, they can't even give a proper massage. They they have all this long list of things that the women can't do, right? I go like they this. burn the roux. Yeah, right. Like, like, but but ask them, what can she do? Man, but she's good in bed. Do you know why? Because that's the only thing she's had good practice in. The only thing she's practiced in her life is getting ran through and 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 su sucking, succeeding, <laughs> and getting ran. Well, so, so well, I get this. Um, it, it's from a different angle, though, because you get the salty women will go, "Oh, your sex dolls. They can't cook. They can't clean." So well, neither can you, bitch. And yeah, like, I'll challenge them because I'm actually quite handy in the kitchen. Because mm -hmm. uh, as I believe in the whole red pill philosophy, if I'm not yep. going to have a woman around, I have to learn how to do this myself. And once you can, you are fully self-sufficient. So I've mm -hmm. had women who are like really kind of impressed that like, you know, I, I can like cook full meals, like three course, yep. five courses, all that sort of shit. And they're like, oh, shit, I can do, you know, maybe egg on toast. <laughs> That's about all yeah. they can do. <laughs> right. They're useless. Hey, well, and Phil, to, to piggyback on that before we go to the next topic, one of the things I find really funny is TFM had this in a video well way back when. Uh, actually, it's actually one of the times he, you know, I first heard of uh, him promoting you was he said the reason why the sex doll isn't very appealing to a woman, other than just functional penis, right? Just crazy turbans and pistons and all that. He said the reason is this: men do all the things. The sex doll, yeah, it can give her sex, but like, can it fix a toilet? Can it uh, stop an intruder? It can't do anything other than one function, right? But the opposite is true of us, like you just said. If a woman goes like this, well, what can that sex doll do? If we do all the other things, then the only thing we're looking for is sex. We go, this fulfills a need that she can't, right? Without without the headache anyway, right? Yeah. But for women, they can't really like they can't really throw it in our faces by saying, Well, you know what? I'll get a sex doll too. Go ahead. Here's the thing. What's the sex doll? What's the sex doll gonna do? It's not gonna cook. It's not gonna clean. It's not gonna watch Netflix with her. You'll call me next time you need the oil changed in your car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the oil change. Nothing. She'll call so, you whenever she needs the sex doll moving because it's too heavy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you, you said that they're pretty, they're fairly heavy, right, Phil? When in terms of uh, well, kilos you, and in pounds. Yeah, I mean, like Celestine is about seventy to seventy-seven pounds. Now, a male mm -hmm. sex doll is going to be heavier than that because he's, you know, he's got the upper body weight and stuff like that, taller. So you'd be going to, towards you know, 85, 90 pounds for the uh, the male one. And I'm surprised just... the British person knows uh, knows the weight of things in pounds. Well, I was brought up, bear in mind I'm nearly 50, so I was brought up in both. We'd gone mm. fully metric in the UK, but of course all the teachers were brought up in Imperial, so they, they talked had to talk both. So. Mm. I've had arguments with TFM over the metric is better than Imperial because I'm one of the few people that I know has lived in both worlds. Mm -hmm. And I suppose I went to a university doing various scientific uh, methodologies. And if you try doing that with Imperial, uh, the Imperial system, it's so much harder. Whereas metric, Absolutely. everything's in base 10. It just makes yep. a lot more sense. Imperial makes sense when you're trying to use the relative measure of things. Like how, how far is it out to the cottage? About 10 miles. How how big's your bedroom? Twenty feet, twenty feet by thirty feet, right? Like those are those are things you understand. Whereas if you're trying to measure things in metric, uh, that's not very useful. Like what's one hundred and sixty eight centimeters to you? Nothing. <laughs> well, I don't know what to do with that. Info. A, a I mean, I can tell woman. you what it is in meters, but I don't know what that looks like. Mm -hmm. Well, I went out with a uh, Czech girl for a while, so she was completely metric on everything. Because I used mm -hmm. to think in terms of human height is in feet and inches, because yeah. that was mm -hmm. brought up that way. But now I'm fully conversant with the metric side of things. Picture, picture six feet. All yep. of us can do it. Yeah, correct. Yeah, yeah. If you say, but but that's because I think that's become like the standard. Uh, do they do they use that term uh, in in like let's say Eastern Bloc Europe, uh, Phil, where women say six feet? Because I haven't heard women, even foreign women, say the actual um, uh, metric. Uh, yeah, the equivalent of six feet. I think that's centimeters. 197 centimeters. Is it? Because they, they, they say six feet. They say six feet tall. Yeah, two meters. Even they, even they say it. You're getting towards two meters. 
Yeah, have you heard something similar, Phil? Like, they just kind of go six yeah, feet, or you know, do, right do women two on uh, British uh, British Tinder. Do they say no men under two meters? No, no. They, <laughs> well, actually, I don't know if they're eighteen. They might now, to be honest. But uh, I I went on Tinder once, and I was just like going no, 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 dear God, no, 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 and then. I, there was about two, which I said, oh, yeah, you look decent. And, of course, she must have got about three million messages a day, so I never heard of that. Course. So I just thought, all right, no, I'm out. I do use Tinder if I'm visiting a city I've never been to before. So do flight attendants. Oh, flight attendants. Maybe I'll hook up with the flight attendant on the way back. You probably will, man. There's something else. Um, no, I, I've done that before where I travel to places, and I'm just like, oh, let's, let's take a look at the local gene pool around here. Nope, nope. No, it's, ba- it's bad. No. It's bad out there, man. <laughs> well, I mean, with the OnlyFans thing that they're going through this as well. I mean, I know everyone has different tests, but like my Twitter feed is just loaded with porn because, of course, I've got like naked dolls on all the time. So Twitter thinks I'm into porn. So it loads it with that. So I see a lot of OnlyFans adverts. And there's these women who are like touching like 65 and stuff, like, you know, getting naked. Oh. And I'm like, dear God, my eyes, yeah, they bleed. Dominatrix grandmas. Yep. <laughs> Remember episode four? Yeah, man. Uh, Phil, but, there, you know, there's the, some things out there. We're running short on time, though. I was going to just say that they still think that they're hot shit. Yeah, yeah, well, the Sims. Um, I'm going to save this last email for because it's it's a it's a doozy. I'll save it for next week. Oh but, shit! Um, hey, 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 look, hey. look at the blue balling. Yep. Hey, you blue balled us on the Thad story for two years. Uh, you can handle it. <laughs> um, man, there's so many. There's so many good news articles posted here in the Discord. There's almost too many. I think there's something like four, four dozen. There's 48 news articles Holy posted shit. since the last time we did a news episode. Damn. <laughs> so I don't even know where to start. Um, we're gonna start with the news that Greta Thunberg turned 18 recently. Oh. Uh, that's that's unfortunate. <laughs> so uh, the question on everyone's mind: Smash or pass? No, smash, uh, smash, uh, pass. That's an yeah. automatic pass. First oh, of God, all, no. with her condition, she looks twelve. Yeah, yeah. Here's the thing. So, Phil, do you know what just made me kind of go like, "Well, huh?" I thought Greta was, yeah, twelve the whole time she's ever been on the the the, the international landscape. I, I honestly did not know that girl's age until just now. Well, we're so used to seeing teenage girls now loaded up with makeup to make them look older. When True. When take, take all that off, they do look like children. Yeah, you know what? Hold up. I'll, I'll Google her. Yeah, anyone that looks at Greta Thunberg and thinks, yeah, I got so- serious questions for you, bro. There's a there's a part two to that story too. Apparently they oh. anointed Greta part two. Now that she's eighteen, you can't groom her anymore. So um, they've now anointed another teenage activist in her uh, place. Oh really? Greta version two. Oh who's that? Does she have a name? Uh, let me see. Someone posted in the news here. God, you guys post so many goddamn news articles in here. It's impossible. Oh uh, Phil, I don't know if uh, if I told you this, but. I was, uh, I work with a Russian girl who is my beloved frenemy. And she sent me, there's a gal, check your phone. Her name is Daria something. Hold on. Let me look up this damn name again. Daria uh, Malagina. So she is a Russian volleyball player, right? Because, you know, my, she always trolls me for being, you know, so tall. She goes, Drex, I finally found a girl for you. So Daria, D-A-R-I-A, and then Malagina, M-A-L-Y, and then Gina, G-I-N-A. And if you click images, Phil, she's got some images, man. This chick is six seven, and I mean, I gotta admit, I'm impressed. She's a lot of legs, a lot of legs. Fair play. That's not bad. Not bad. Um. Yeah, help me out, Chad. I gotta find where this uh, new Greta is. So now that she's come of age and she's now adult, we need another child to tell us what we're doing wrong. Right. Exactly. That's exactly what it is. I mean, it sounds like grooming with extra steps, right? Well, 
I, I can understand how it works on the likes of the leftists because they, they think emotional uh, manipulation is going to work politically and it really shouldn't. And certainly not on the right anyway. You know what though, Phil? You say it shouldn't, but uh, I mean, I don't know, man. It, it's kind of working because I have talked to a, a few people and kind of gotten this sense of uh, I've heard some people who say, I regret voting for Biden. And then everything is just about emotion, Phil. Uh, you know, we we recently right here in Minnesota, we had a another police shooting of, you know, an unarmed black guy. You know, the same old story. Sounds like another criminal because, you know, it is what it is. Right. And there's people out here marching and all this shit. I'm thinking, but what are you marching for? Like, he exchanged fire with the police. Now, given now I got to be fair to both sides. So, you know, we got to get a full investigation, get the, the full story, because, of course, you know, both sides manipulate. Right. But, Phil. At what point do people start going, wait a minute, we need to start like really questioning both sides of this of this argument. Black lives matter, blue lives matter, like really looking into that. But but th that requires critical thinking. Yeah, but, I mean, I, I, from an emotional knee jerk reaction response, I, I can see how perhaps there might be people in the local area that start to go out for a march and a bit of a protest because they, they enjoy that sort of thing. But yeah. we, we had like thousands marching in the UK over police brutality of blacks. And so like, no, there's like one black got killed in police custody in the UK in the whole of last year. And <laughs> he, was, he was a terrorist, so what, what, what's your problem? So you're protesting yep. in the UK, you wanna start destroying London about what happened over in America. So like, this got nothing to do with that, that ide ideology as is. It, it's all just Marxism. It's all for, for validation. You know it, I know it. Um, and these are the same people in, in Phil. Here's something I've always laughed at. It is the white liberal, especially the white liberal female, who's going to be the first one to call the cops when, she, when a guy like me is around. Yeah. And that's the funniest shit. Like, like, Phil, you know, who, who do you think is going to be most likely to call the cops if I'm just like around? Like, I'm not doing anything. I'm just physically in, in the space. Like, oh, I'm just in this coffee shop or I'm over here. Who's going to call the cops and say that they're scared that I'm doing something? It's the white liberal female. Oh yeah, my god, middle hell, class. black man. Yep, middle class, uh, fucking liberal white female. Like, oh, come on. Because, of course, they feel so entitled to protection, even if they just feel uncomfortable. Yep. That that warrants a police response. Yep. Yeah, and a lot of times, like, the, the guy's literally, like, literally doing it. He's just there. Like, like uh, you know, the, the, the guy who was bird watching. Um, recently, there was another Karen where, um, I don't know if you heard about the, uh, the Grammy winning uh, guy. His son got falsely accused in a hotel, but it's like it's the same shit over and over. We're like, just just being somewhere in black is enough. Like, you you were literally just there. Like, yeah, or you know, even like you know the, the Starbucks thing that happened a couple of years back, right? Where they were there to meet about a a house, right? Closing on a house. Guy, well, oh, I'm gonna use the bathroom. Whole sink about it. It's the same. And when people say like, oh, this stuff doesn't happen, I go, dude. I go, you know how you know it happens, Phil. If someone can acknowledge they wouldn't want to be the other side, like if someone says, "Hey, Phil, you're going to go into family court. Would you rather be the man or the woman?" <laughs> we had one in the the UK. I mean, it wasn't a, a racial thing; it's just a, a white guy walking yep. through Waterloo train station in London. It's one of the more the the larger ones, very popular. Mm -hmm. And a woman was walking past him about eight feet away. Said he sexually assaulted her. The only wow. the reason the only guy the, the only reason the guy got off is there was CCTV that no one knew about. Yep. And they just sit to saw them pass one another, and she just thought, "Yeah, I think I'll have him." Yep. That's all it took. It, that's all it takes. Like, it, it, like, it's, like, it's all dudes. Like, like I, I want guys to understand that I'm not sitting here trying to do this Marxist, you know, separating black white. All men at any time can get me tooed and, and falsely accused. So that's the unity Phil and I were talking about on the last show, which is. That, that male unity of at some point you just have to separate the wheat from the chaff, right? You got to say either you are a guy who is not a, a beta male bitch made cuck simp mangina or you are, right? Like there, there is no real in between. Like, like, Phil, think about it. Have you ever met a guy who's really in between? They're either a simp or they're red pill, right? Like there's not really an in between. I tend to phrase it slightly different and I'm not talking biologically. It's, uh, uh, more psychologically, are you a man or a woman, irrespective yep. of your biology? And that's that's essentially what it comes down to, because all these sims, 
they're all like soy boys and stuff like that. They're, they're all very yep. effeminate and they're terrified of confrontation. God forbid they ever get into a fist fight like men used to do all the time back in the day. And then we, well, see, we could Phil, have we, a fist fight and then have a beer afterwards and be best buddies. But, but Phil, we have something dangerous in America. Um, the simps here are actually, they will fight. Like, so, so, so soy boys are one thing, right? But I'll tell you what right now, in the black community, the simps are violent. <laughs> you know, when you, when you look at gangbangers, gangbangers are, are gynocentric. You see what I'm saying? Like, who, who do gangbangers worship? My mama, my girl. And they're shooting up somebody because you looked at them wrong. This is So they're doing the same thing that this woman did in, in the Waterloo Station, just the male version of it, which is dominance instinct. I felt threatened. That, that's why you always hear, guys, you know, feel, why are you looking at me like that? You just respected me. And the guy's like, I'm literally just sitting here. And it becomes, it becomes immediate violence, right? So so our, our simp in America, in the black community, is the most dangerous of all. Because, like, these dudes, in, like, like, prime example, the actor Terry Crews, right? Big, huge, buff black dude, but listen to him talk. This dude is as beta as beta gets. So is The Rock. So, so, so we have a bigger problem here. Phil, I don't know how, like I said, it may be different in London. In America, a lot of the worst kinds of simps, look, uh, military. I haven't met too many military men or law enforcement men, Phil, who aren't fucking simp manginas. I, it may be different in your, in your neck of the woods, but in America, I kid you not, the cops, the military, they are the biggest fucking mangina simps you can find. Yeah, TFM was talking about this on a New Year's Eve stream. Uh, it's conditioned. You're, uh, and look, uh, police academy is not that different from boot camp. You're taught mm -hmm. to follow orders, yep. right? You're conditioned to be a certain way, and that certain way is a simp. Because yeah, that's much. most beneficial to the military and to police headquarters. Yep. Yeah, when a woman cries out, you run in guns blazing, not asking questions and being in masculine frame and making sure that what's going on is real. And it's unfortunate, but that's basically where we're at, Phil. We're, we're at this yeah. point now where people just say, uh, you know, a woman cried, so let's make sure that we, we run in and put down the bad man. And then they find out later, yeah, the bitch was lying. Uh, Phil, do you, know what, do you know what happened in your neck of the woods? Uh, if you go on your phone and Google, I don't know if you heard the story. Uh, it happened a couple of years back. Uh, a kid was exonerated. 40,000 texts between he and his false accuser. Were oh yeah, him. and they suppressed it's that. Scotland. Yeah. They suppressed it. I believe it's in Scotland. It might not be the one I'm thinking of. So therefore, there were two of them. Mm. Oh, oh, what's that, Tim? Was there any news articles you wanted to bring in today? Oh no, no, I'm I'm good. I, I just said I was going to come on here and, and give you guys a, a few hours, and then get ready to do all the lifting and get ready for this trip and uh, to Nick's because uh, fuck, I hate that fucking drive more than anything in life. Phil, I hate that drive. Yeah, well, yeah. So, so Phil, here, here's the thing: the the pandemic. You know, and, and in all honesty, man, I should have just gone back to the goddamn family court, and because uh, you know now my daughter's with me even more time, right? The pandemic. What ironically, what it did is that it's now basically the summer schedule has become the year long schedule, which is a week on week off because she's distance learning. So there's no reason for her to only come on weekends or breaks during the school year, right? Because now it's like, oh, yeah, well, she's here for you know, five, six, seven days. There you go. Let's see how that works out in court. Though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They'll, they'll sit there and go, oh, this, this is very temporary. You can end at any time. Let's make sure. Let's make sure we still try to get some money from you. Yeah, fuck the family court, by the way. It's just as well I'm not in that situation because my first thought would be, do I have the savings to have her killed? Yeah. I suppose fathers in that uh, situation say, you don't want to upset your children. As I'm not a father, that's perhaps why I think a bit more homicidally. Of course, <laughs> Phil. There's always that time where you start sliding into some some orange juice thoughts. You, you look at OJ and you go, huh. "Yeah, yeah." I mean, well, if I was the, was it a Can Canadian guy who's paid fifty grand uh, a month? Yeah, yeah. He, oh, he should have. He should have. Why do you always gotta, yeah, man? Aren't my country well, gets no respect? <laughs> well, I just tend to think. I mean, I know all eyes are going to be on him because he's just kind of come out of the limelight. But like once the furore dies down, it'd be like, you know, a couple of guys, ten, twenty thousand dollars $20,000. i am sure a job could be, could be done. Make it look like an accident. Just have her bumped in a random uh, alley in Scarborough. 
Yeah. Just uh, disappear. Never seen again. Yeah. No remains. Phil, things happen, right? Things happen. Shit just accidentally happens every day. Accidentally happen. Hey, uh, Phil, do you remember Batman Begins when uh, Falcone says that? Yeah. When, you know, remember the, the, the goon comes in, Flash comes in saying, I mean, are you sure? You know, that's a, you know, a bit much even for this town. He goes, I mean, it's Gotham City. I mean, sometimes things, sometimes th you know, things just go bad, right? That's the way yeah. people need to start looking at it like this. Yeah, man, I don't know what happened to her. Like, so, so when you start getting questioned, Phil, what, what happened to her? I don't know, man. I was sitting right here. I, I don't know what happened. Well, how come she mysteriously wound up uh, gone two days before she was due in court? I don't know, man. Things just happened. Well, consider it the other way around. You know, guy manages to completely shaft the ex-wife or ex-girlfriend, whatever she is, in court. And this sort of thing starts to catch on. I would imagine the boys from her side of the family might get together and work that guy over hard, such that I he stopped so. claiming that kind of idea. And nobody would think twice about it. Nope. Nope. I think it's time to wrap up for today. Uh, thank you very much, Phil, for coming on. Anytime. I love this guy. Now, Phil, I, I got to say, though, uh, next time uh, we, we have you on, man, I do have a small – it's a personal request. Very strong personal request. Oh, okay. You just I'm, I'm <laughs> looking at I'm is. looking at your room. See, <laughs> Tim knows because he knows me. I, I mean, now Phil, if it's just too much to ask, I mean, could you could you just like self advertise the whole show by just having particular dolls just somewhat visible within the frame of the camera? Now, I'm not gonna say I'm gonna say Maple, but I mean, if she's easier <laughs> to carry into the room. <laughs> Okay, so, Phil, if she's easier to carry into the room and just kind of like she could be sitting in the back reading a newspaper or something, you know. I see this I twilight mean, in this Drexel's eyes right now talking about Maple. Just saying the name Phil, Maple, and I see your eyes just twinkle. Anyways, um, just uh, just a quick uh, producer's note. So unfortunately, the New Year's uh, stream had to be safe for work, so we couldn't have any dolls that were showing anything. Um, oh, no, no, she, she can be. She this can be fully, video here is not recorded, so you can do whatever you want. Hell, uh, Drex, I'm sure we'd get a ton of super chat money if you were just doing a stream naked. <laughs> well, as I'm uh, as I'm creating, as you guys know, putting together a Discord server, I'm going to have to start populating that with videos and things like that. So I was going to do a whole instructional uh, kind of series of videos for people to actually give you a bit more of an up close and personal. Uh, that's the most important thing I need to know, is how do you clean these dolls? How do you keep them maintained? Well, I'll have to do a video on the manual wear, and then we've got a nice mechanical wear if you want to actually pay extra for toys. So that'll be interesting. Because I, I, I'm pretty sure Drexel's uh, approach to this is when it when stuff starts coming out of the eyes, then it's time to empty her. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, well, Phil, here, here's the wild thing, man, is... Uh... I had someone say once, I think someone said this on, on TFM's show where they were making, you know, they're kind of like bashing the whole doll thing, right? And they were like, you know, oh, you know, who, who's going to buy a used doll? And, you know, that thing has been, you know, some guy has been all up in there. And, uh, and then he's like, but let's just think about the average female. If you apply that same standard, uh, uh, Phil, like, what is the average woman's body count right now? Let, let's say she's 30 years old. What's her body count? Oh, God, we're way over 100. Easily. Easily. But, but this is the reasoning I use against men who say that, or, or women, I suppose. So so all of the partners you've ever had have been virgins, right? And they just got quiet because yep. they know they've lost the argument there and then. Yep, they lost. So they lost. I, I'm actually surprised we didn't talk as much about dolls, uh, <laughs> considering. I love dolls. Well, 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 but here's the thing. But then, then it's too predictable, right? Like if, if we bring on Dollhouse Phil and just and just talk dolls, people go, "Oh yeah, dolls," because because that's that's what we like. Phil, here's the thing: you are too interesting of a guy to just be uh, pigeonholed and to just Thank talk. Like, you, sir. You, you, you like you you have you have a lot of you have a lot of things to talk about. Like there are certain guys that just are an interesting. They're interesting people, right? So it's like. Phil, I think, can talk about a lot. Like, like I said, we can talk about Batman Begins. We can talk movies, the 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 masculine journey. Like, we have a million things to talk about. And Phil, I don't know if you've ever had this happen. Where uh, I told Tim that this happened to me on Nick's show, where the people who don't like me as much will say, "Drex just talks about smashing thoughts." But I'm like, wait a minute. I've been on Nick's show like 50 times, and the timestamp boys show all the different topics we've had, and 
if if I had a problem with you, Phil, I would go. Phil just talks about sex dolls and, and, and creepy stuff, even though you talk about a million other things. Yeah. Speaking of timestamps, uh, the guy who does uh, the the yeah the guy who does our timestamps just finished the New Year's Eve stream. That no went shit. four and a half hours. Damn. Well, Damn. that's not bad for Drex and I, because we were on what seven hours on the. On, uh, yeah, I know, dude. <laughs> Phil, you know you know what's bad though is that we would we would be like that rare duo that uh, if somebody you know if we had like documentarians following us around, could you imagine that shit? They'd be like, yeah, dude, we, we ran out of film, man. We ran, out of, <laughs> we, we, we 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 had two terabytes of, of data, and you guys fucked up and just kept going. Like, hey, we we got we got to we got to edit this shit because I mean, Phil, like, I, there's just certain things that like. You look around you and you see, like I said, I, I'm seeing things in, in the U.S. I know you're seeing things in the U.K. And I want these guys who are watching right now to know that, like, understand in 2021 that the chameleon is very alive and well. The Jezebel spirit is very alive and well. And they're going to keep invading these male spaces. And feel these guys, like, some guys are starting to realize what I'm telling them because I'm like, look, dude, start looking around you. How many ex-girlfriends or whatever have hit you up recently? And they're like, holy shit, it did happen. I was like, they don't actually care about you. They're just trying to use you. That's it. That's all they're doing. Yeah. You know so, that, Phil. Like, they, they don't care. Oh, we so are going to be doing a bonus episode recording with Phil. Uh, and you're more, uh, that does not go on YouTube because it's only for our uh, subscribers, right? The people who pay money for to support the show. So you can have whoever you want. I think we should have people around. Oh, uh, uh, okay. I, I can have a couple of dolls in the background. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> um, and and, and uh, Tim, for that one, I think we should have the. Uh, we should go ahead and let the audience ask Phil questions. Oh, like, absolutely. Like really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I, I sure they're going to ask you all kinds of questions, Phil, about uh, you know fat chicks in the UK, uh, Prince Harry the cuck, and of course doll questions. Your engineering background. I mean, like you, you're. I'm telling you, you're you're just like the jack of all trades over there, man. Yeah. So, but master um, of none. <laughs> <laughs> a, a lot of master something goes on with those dolls. <laughs> Indeed, professionally so. Yeah. Oh, so, um, what a lifesaver! The bonus episode is due on the twenty fifth of every month. I usually want two to three days to edit it, so that's about the time ske uh, schedule we're working with. I believe the twenty fifth is a Monday. Yeah. So if we record uh, anywhere around the 20th, 21st, 22nd. Um, that gives me plenty of time okay. to edit. So we'll work out a schedule. Uh, other yeah, I'll that, be off basically the rest of the month. Um, I, uh, I have almost every day off the rest of the month, uh, except uh, they, they want me to, to do some stuff. There's people that want me to do this, that, and the other. I'm like, look, I think I'm just going to front load shit before I go and uh, fly out to Columbia because I don't want to do – I'm in the fill category now. I don't want to do anything. I'd rather sit here, talk shit, swallow spit all day long, play some video games, and just in in just like live life for a while. Because Phil, you ever get that feeling that you you're not burnt out, but you're just tired. You know what I mean? Like you're just like I'm just fucking tired. That that's what I had when I uh, was made redundant to my last place of work, and I said to myself in between jobs a number of times, I'm going to take a few months off, and I was right, right this time. I'm not even going to look for work. I'm just going to sit yeah. on my ass until I'm ready. And it was about like 10 months when I thought, well, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of relaxed up now. I'm, I'm ready to do something. But I wasn't yeah. going to go back to working for the man. That's Correct. how this was all born. And I have i don't think I've gotten up really, like gotten up and gotten dressed before 9, 30, 10 for about five years. Oh, on the bonus episode, mm. we absolutely have to go through the origin story of the dollhouse. Like just from <laughs> yeah. the beginning. We don't have enough time to get it on this episode, but it, we'll definitely get it in a bonus episode. From start to finish, oh, I want to hear, like, how did this start as an idea? What were some of the legal hoops you had to jump through, like customs and trade? I want those stories. They're probably very interesting, even if they're, even if they're like PTSD for you. And the, <laughs> uh, the investigation by the National Crime Agency, I'll tell you. Of course. <laughs> oh, man, that was the biggest well, blue well, ball Phil, of all time right there. Phil, I, I will ask you this. We'll, we'll get into that on, on the next show, which is uh, just in, in general, um, how did your mom take it? Did she, Horrendously did she like embarrassed. For about two <laughs> years, she just told people, oh. oh, 
Phil has a business, but I don't know what it is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that sounds about right. Uh, so, uh, Phil, is, is is your dad still alive? Yeah, yeah. He, he just thought it was How a he joke. He, he just thought it was a non-starter. So that's a ridiculous idea. Then when I saw him a year later, I said, well, I've done £100,000 worth of uh, business. Said, what? Oh, I'll yeah. carry on. <laughs> carry on. Man, if I had a lot more space in this house, I'd absolutely apply for a Canadian franchise. All right. Well, do you know, do you know what I find funny about uh, the the difference in reactions, though, Phil? Is that like I think your dad was coming from a place of um, he in, 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 like in my, when my mom was in town and the they were on uh, Doctor Oz, right? So if you look up Doctor Oz uh, sex dolls, they were on there. My mom's face was total disgust the whole time. Like, so, so she was like morbidly curious, right? Like, like you know how moms are. Like, look at these sick, yep. sick men. Like, I can't. What kind of a nasty man would sit here with a doll? So she's saying that, but she she watched the whole episode. But she watched it. Now, to be fair, she's retired, so she watches the whole episode every time, anyway, right? Mm -hmm. But one of the things I found funny was she she has that look because she. And this is similar to to what what my 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 real criticism of uh, my dear friend Nick is. They're coming from a position of their own uh, life experience in in that uh, in in that topic, right? So, like when Nick talks about relationships, he hasn't been on the dating market in, in two decades, right? So I'm yeah, telling Nick, Nick, this is what it's like now. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's like, the thing. If if Nick was to go out now, he would be like, "Are they all this horrible?" But they, yeah, that's yeah, yeah. Exactly so, what he would come up with. So, and, and that's where that's where like I, I do believe this. The the only real disconnect that Nick and I have, where we truly strongly disagree, of course, is in that whole like that marriage space, right? But the reason Nick has the view that he does is that hey, remember, and Nick will he will even acknowledge, yes, Nick got lucky, right? He acknowledges he got lucky. Yeah, is yes, Lady he acknowledges like one in a million or one in a billion. Well, here's the thing: though. Lady Rackets is not is she's actually not one in a million or one in a billion. What she is is she's one in a billion to Nick Rakeda. You see what I'm saying? One in six billion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, because like, like, Phil, you've seen this, right? Like, whereas there may be someone else who Lady Rackets wouldn't fit their mold of what they want out of a wife, right? And, and, and vice versa. There's women who say Nick Rakeda isn't what they want out of a husband. You see what I'm saying? The but the difference is, I don't know. <laughs> well, 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 I get the question a lot, actually. As you're a sex doll vendor and you say you're not going to get married, do you just hate all women or do you never think it's going to work? And I say, well, in all fairness, there's probably a couple of thousand women who are perfect yep. for me out there somewhere. But I'm, I'm tired of lurking and failing and stuff like that. I've got nowhere near it. So if she drifts into my life, then great. But if not, I'm going to be quite happy single. Right. And, and and there's women that I get along with famously, and like I said, when when Nick and Lady Rackets first started dating, and I ended up meeting her and everything, you know, like I said, I I shared with with Nick my own reservations, but at the end of the day, I wasn't going to tell him like don't marry her. I was just like you know just no, because because like I said, I was coming from a different position. Nick had I think he only had dated one girl in his whole life before Lady Rackets. You see what I'm saying? So I was coming from a whole different mindset. That's going to make a massive difference. To it makes guy. a massive difference. It, it, look where look where he's at. He's in the middle of nowhere. So so everything that that is his marriage. And like I said, I respect his marriage. I respect him. I respect Lady Rackets. I love the kids. But I'm like Nick. You are living like a very small percentage of the the population. That's why your viewpoint is so much different from mine. I was like, but in my viewpoint, and, and like I said, I go. And, and, and here's what's funny, though, um, uh, Phil. Both of them have actually admitted to agreeing with with our point of view, which is Lady Rackets has said she goes, "Oh, I couldn't even imagine, like you know, if, if you know if something if Nick dropped dead tomorrow, and I was like back on the, the dating market, she goes, I wouldn't know what to do." And Nick has said something. He, Nick has said he's, like, "I wouldn't want to be out there dealing with what people are out there dealing with now with Twitch thoughts and OnlyFans thoughts." And Nick would know about Twitch thoughts. That that would put the fear of God. Now he became one. Yeah, yeah, now he became one. Oh. Anyways, well, everyone, thank you very much for listening to episode six of the Make Town podcast. Drexel, say say goodbye to everyone. Closing thoughts. Hey, goodbye to everybody. I hope uh, all you guys are staying on your purpose and, and gals, if they're listening, uh, staying on your purpose in 2021. Uh, 2020 was the shittiest year uh, for a lot of people. It was great for other people, depending on what business you're in, but... I just hope that everyone's doing well and uh, staying healthy and, uh, you know, keep yourself safe and sane. And thanks once again to my illustrious guests who, who can come back any fucking time is uh, my man Dollhouse Phil.
Many thanks for having me on. And to everyone who's listening, ta-ta for now.